going to run the fast-paced offensive spread that Kevin Wilson likes to run, having a 230-pound inside run threat, which they do have a good backup. Indiana has a very good runner, Divine Redding, behind him. But to have two big backs that can crease you in the middle would be very important for them today. Kevin Cronin will kick it away. Deep. Danny Dunn, number 24, and Damon Graham, number 38. We are underway from East Lansing, Michigan, almost. Lucy knocked the ball <laughs> off the tee. <laughs> As she Darn did her Lucy. annual beautiful <laughs> fall job. Yeah, a lot of wind today coming right to left behind the back of Michigan State, but down on the field, hard to tell what it's really doing because of this bowl. This is my first time here to this wonderful stadium. It's a very tight field. The, the, the bowl is right on top of the field, and so it's hard to tell what the wind is doing, certainly. It had the Lucy effect on the ball. The left goal posts are blowing one way, the right goal posts the opposite way. And the kick will go out of the end zone, and the Hoosiers will start from the 25. Nate Sudfeld leads the Big Ten in passing yards, just a little over 290 yards a game. Last week's tough last second loss to Rutgers, he had 32 completions, a career record 464 yards, another career record four touchdowns for the season. Very accurate, 63% of his passes have been completed. Sudfeld coming off of his own injury, a bad ankle. Throws underneath the ball, incomplete. Intercepted by Michigan State on the bounce. It looked like it was Gerald Owens. Sudfeld, his throw was right on the money. And it was knocked away by Demetrius Cox. Oh my goodness, Lan Grayson Miller. Pick that ball. This is oh, it's only Grayson seven. Miller. Yeah, it's Grayson Miller. Picks this ball off of the turf by about an inch. Terrific job by Demetrius Cox to get there. The ball should have been caught by Ricky Jones, the receiver. An excellent throw and timing route by Nate Sudfeld. Jones maybe has a little too much amp in those hands right now, but a huge turnover and a wonderful job by Grayson Miller. That ball looked like it was about a half an inch from hitting the ground when he snagged it. Miller is one of two true freshman safeties in the Michigan Rolling State the secondary. An interception. The previous play is under further review. They're going to take a look at this, but it sure looked like at first blush mm -hmm. that it was a great catch off the tip. Well, what a bummer of a start for Kevin Wilson. Ricky Jones uh, ran a great route. He had one-on-one -on -one coverage on the backside. And he's a good receiver. Yeah, he's their top guy. And uh, the ball just got there, and he wasn't able to make the catch. Whew. Now see if he controls it through. That's a catch. Holy cow. I can see why they're going to review it, but this is, I mean, it's. Did it touch? Uh, it sure doesn't look like it there. The, the... No, it doesn't. You can see the hand. You can see. Perception is confirmed. Yeah. First down, Michigan State. That was a good stop of play to check it, though. What a catch. I know. To pull yeah. that right off the grass tips. Well, Miller making his second start. He started last week against Michigan, and you mentioned Kari Willis, the other safety who's had to start. Michigan State has had so many guys injured in their secondary. Mark D'Antonio, whose background is as a secondary coach, they've had to cross-train wide receivers, and we'll see some true freshmen that haven't played yet in the secondary play for Michigan State against this Indiana tempo today. Michigan State has been very successful with points off of turnovers. Holmes, one of three tailbacks, will get the start, and he gets it right in the mouth as he takes the handoff. He'll lose a couple of yards. Let's take a look at Connor Cook, one of the outstanding quarterbacks in the country. 30 wins as a starter. That's the most among quarterbacks in FBS. Third in Michigan State history with throwing 61 career touchdown passes. 13 of those have come this year, and add that to the fact he has been picked off only twice. This is an Indiana defense that has been mugged all year. Blitz coming, and they got there. Cook is drilled. Middle linebacker T.J. Simmons shot the gap and nailed it. This is a very good front. You know, you mentioned the struggles that they've had uh, uh, with the yardage they've given up. A lot of that has become because of, like Michigan State, they've had trouble in the secondary. But this is just 
And offensive line, remember, Jack Allen is out, the normal starter. His brother, Brian Allen, comes over. That looked like a communication error up front for Michigan State. What a start to get a, a, a huge blitz like that on second down. Third and a mile. All the way back at the 46-yard line. Cook with time this time, now under pressure, throws off his back foot. An excellent coverage downfield at the 10-yard line by Andre Brown, who was right with McGarrett King, stride for stride. And Kings is the only guy that gives him real deep speed, even though he's not a burner. Yeah, it's the one thing they're missing, Michigan State. Good pressure. And this is this happened a lot last week against Michigan, where Cook got uh, hit right as he threw it. But Andre Brown, we will talk a lot about true freshman, first-year freshman in the secondary today for both teams. He's won in a very, very young secondary. No juniors or seniors for Indiana in the back end. Hartbarger is on to punt. He's had trouble with snaps couple of games lately tries to kill this inside the 10 but it takes a forward bounce a 46 yard punt into the end zone so the turnover doesn't hurt Indiana three weeks ago the Hoosiers suffered difficult injuries at key positions against Ohio State Jordan Howard rolled up by Sudfeld the running back who suffered the left ankle injury later in the game Sudfeld who already had a sore left ankle, tweaked it and was physically limping and eventually replaced in that game by Xander Diamant, who is now himself injured. But Diamant not even on the trip, so they'd have to go down to third stringer Danny Cameron, former head coach Cam Cameron's son, who's a redshirt freshman. Fake to Howard by Sudfeld, throws out in the flat complete to Page, and Mitchell Page gets across the 35-yard line. Jones gave him a block downfield. And watch how fast this Indiana offense will go. They don't bring, if they substitute, Michigan State gets a chance to substitute and match in a line. But if they don't substitute, Indiana can go as fast as any team in the country. With Howard on the field, they've got a great one-two punch. And Sudfield is a really good, and studying him, studying Connor Cook, studying him, I think Sudfield's another guy. Who's, he's going to get a long look to play in the NFL. Very live on. Howard with that ankle heavily taped, dives forward. Maybe a half a yard, Joel Heath, one of the defensive tackles, made the tackle. And I think what you want to watch if you're Indiana, you know the young man wants to play. It's he transferred from UAB for this chance. But can he push off that left ankle? We saw him against Ohio State. We broadcast that game. We saw him continue to try to go and just didn't have the push. Divine Redding is a very good back, a very capable back. They also took Mike Majette, who was a true freshman wide receiver special teams player, and have used him at some running back. So they do have some other options. Third down six, Howard stays in. Sudfeld looks to the bench for the play. Good protection for Sudfeld, and he's got the completion to Jones. You will see throughout this game, he may not have a rocket arm that everybody would love to have, but he has a very accurate arm. Yeah, and it gets the ball out quickly, but this, this offensive line, it is the strength of the team. It's crazy to say that at Indiana, that the off, any line is the strength, yeah. but this offensive line against a very good defensive line for Michigan State gave great protection on that third and six. Mike Majet checks in as the running back. Sudfeld looks downfield, completes the page, up on the second drive at the 35-yard line, and another one of those freshman DBs, Kari Willis, made the tackle. Yeah, Jason Spriggs, Wes Martin, Jake Reed, Dan Feeney, Demetric Camille is the offensive line up front, and right now they're giving plenty of time. That That's a second or third window, meaning the quarterback has to hold it until that guy comes open, and the pocket was clean. Sudfeld in the pistol. This is Majette. He was nailed by Malik McDowell. Well, well, they're getting some good pass protection, but they're not exactly moving these guys no. off the line. This defensive line, uh, uh, Malik McDowell, who wears a running back number, but is one of the better defensive tackles in the game. And, of course, Shalit Calhoun on the outside. This is a great front. What a catch by Page. What a throw by Sudfeld. 
And that was McDowell sli uh, slipping free just before this ball was released, and Sudfeld had to step into it while he was getting hit. What a terrific throw. And right now, this secondary for Michigan State, which is missing, they only have two guys from the top eight from the beginning of the season available in today's game. They're down to four and five true freshmen having to rotate in. Majette, the man who was pulling in the interior of the line, stumbled just before Majette <laughs> got there. If you did not see the Ohio State game against Indiana, this is not surprising. They played the number one Buckeyes off their feet until Howard and Sudfeld got hurt. I, 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 the way we called that game and the, the momentum felt like Indiana was going to win that game until those two guys got hurt. And this is for Michigan State. This is, this is where they're going to have a tough run, I think, down the road to stay undefeated. Defensively, they do have some struggles in the secondary. They, they'll get guys better, but, but they can be exposed. They have been very opportunistic, but you could hardly say they were elite this year. Sudfeld. Complete down to the four-yard line. And if you go and look Morrissey at... Morrissey made the tackle, and it was uh, Jordan Fuchs. It's unbelievable the guys that they have lost. Justin Williams tore his bicep, had surgery, may be back for the bowl game. Deontay Copeland, who was turning in to their best corner, out with a neck injury. Darian Hicks expected to play today, but not able to go. Mark Myers has been suspended. And, of course, Watts Jackson, who gave them depth at the safety position. The hero broke his hip last week, so... This is a group that can be picked on. First and goal to go. Howard back in the tailback. Howard with the ball. Driving near the goal line. Touchdown, Indiana. That is Howard's value, the power he brings. And if Indiana can spread these guys out and get a power run game with what we're talking about, let's double check that Howard did, in fact, get in. Oh, yes, he did. It looked like his body was parallel. Nothing touched the ground before the ball broke the plane. But if they get this 230-pounder going three, four, five yards a clip in between the tackles with the secondary problems and Sudfeld showing he came to play today, this, this could be an awfully good day for Kevin Wilson offensively. Sudfeld was perfect on the drive. Five out of five, 67 yards. Four minutes and 10 seconds, an 80-yard drive. Griffin Oaks for the point after. And they quiet the crowd here, taking a 7-0 lead. How about that? A turnover on their first drive on the road for Indiana. Ball start, offense, number 74, five-yard penalty, remains a try. It's the kind of thing that would historically have plagued Indiana. You come on the road against the top 10 team, commit a turnover on the first series, game's over. Yeah. And, and remember, this is a team that was up by 22 points. They got outscored by 22 in the fourth quarter last week against Rutgers. Two interceptions, a punt snap over the head. The defense imploded. And so to come out, fumble on your first offensive play, or get an interception, your first offensive play, get a defensive stop, and then make it, frankly, look a little easy going down the field against Michigan State. Pretty good start for the Hoosiers. Bailey and Spriggs, great blocks on the touchdown run. of scrimmage and if you look at this schedule the middle part of this schedule is just brutal michigan state ohio state penn state iowa it's just been a, a brutal run here but this is this is a solid club this is a trending team no doubt rj shelton on the return hit and pushed back at about the 22. abc saturday night football presented by walmart has great running back ezekiel elliott and a new quarterback for Ohio State taking on Rutgers. 8 Eastern on ABC as well as streaming live on Watch ESPN. There were some, a couple articles written this week. How about a three-way tie between Ohio State, Michigan State, and Michigan? It wipes out all the other tiebreakers. It, it's an amazing scenario and if it, that could happen. Yeah, and it goes to the college football playoff committee's vote of the top 25 for the highest uh, ranking and that doesn't come out until Tuesday before the championship game and we reached out to the Big Ten Conference via email saying do you have a comment we haven't heard back yet but it is a 
a crazy scenario if those teams end up with one loss each. Connor Cook, play fake, completes his pass to McGarrett King, and he's dropped in his tracks by Andre Brown. It's enough for a first down just at the 32. This is an Indiana defense that gives up yards by the ton, and their real problem is they're very thin. They wear down late in the game like they did last week against Rutgers. Brian Knorr, the defensive coordinator, knows that his secondary has the issues, but with Latham back and some guys up front, they can cause pressure, and they are good at taking the ball away. Not much there as Holmes gets the carry. They've used three backs. Holmes, L.J. Scott, and Madre London. Actually, they've used four. Delton Williams has also gotten some carries. Nobody has taken over the position, and I think that goes back to your earlier point about that offensive line. And Madre London was out last week and out today against uh, Indiana, but the offensive line has been banged up. Allen is out. Dennis Fenley, who was a really promising young guy coming up, had was playing for the left tackle, Conklin, when he's here to hurt against uh, Purdue. And he Cook. was hurt. Over the middle and got that to R.J. Shelton. And they may have to just start throwing the ball because they're getting nothing on the run. Three rushes, all minus yards. If you watch the second half of the Michigan game, as Connor Cook now going fast, looks like he's going to get the snap off. Yeah, they, they got the snap off. Michigan State running to the right side here. Kind of, Mich you know, when you watch Michigan State now, what blows you away is if you ask a common fan what offense Michigan State runs, oh, the old I formation, yeah. two tight ends. Powerful. They run as much spread. I'm not calling them Arizona, but they run a ton of spread. And in that second half against Michigan, when they had no run game against a very good Michigan defensive front and an offensive line that was struggling, Connor Cook, it, they just put it in his hands. He's a little bummed he didn't get the win when he had the ball in his hands, that they had to give the ball back before the punt, but he was on target and they really put a lot on his shoulders yeah. cook again quickly over the middle that one was in and out of the hands of aaron burbridge and, they've been, and that spread offense you know you've got to give credit to mark d'antonio because he came in and told his coaching staff look all these other teams are moving the ball i like what i see i want some of this incorporated in the offense and they have done more and more as the years have gone by yeah they're up to 40 50 percent spread formation plays. It had some trouble with drops. And fortunately for Burbridge, of course, uh, McGarrett Kings had a drop last week. So if they're going to the throw game, this good veteran wide receiver group could dial it down, you know, just tighten it down a notch. Third and eight, blitz coming. They don't get there. Now Cook can't find anybody. He's under pressure down the middle, and it's caught. Burbridge at the 17-yard line, a gain of 31. The ball was underthrown a little bit, but you could understand why under the pressure. Well, one thing Connor Cook does as well as any quarterback I've seen is watch the pump fake. He comes back to this side, and if you freeze it when he looks, this is where he was looking with a safety on top. And the safety, we were talking about these young players, he turns back to the middle with no threat to that side, and Connor Cook makes him pay. Cook brought the safety back to the other side, and because the offensive line held up, to come back. High snap. And that's going to lose two or three yards. They got the ball to Damian Terry, who was the third string quarterback who they used in the Wildcat a little bit. That was sort of a yeah, bad snap. strange looking play. Well, remember, Brian Allen is in there. He's played a lot of center, just a sophomore, spelling his brother Jack, who's out with an ankle injury. And uh, this snap just a little high and hot. And Cook, who is uh, all of. Oh, I'd say 6'6", six, six, wouldn't you say? Yeah. Use all of it to get it's that good one. Good thing he wasn't 6'5", wouldn't have gotten it. They fake it to Terry again. Pressure coming toward the end zone and overthrown. Intended for Jamal Lyles, one of the four tight ends that they play. And, and Brian Cook missed him by a couple of strides. And Brian Knorr has dialed up T.J. Simmons again. Simmons, a very good blitzer. And he's going to be picked up, but picked up late by Gerald Holmes. And because of that right in his face, you could see Connor Cook was not able to step into that throw, had to throw it a little early, and therefore over through Lyles. Good blitz and force a third and long. Third and 14 from the 22-yard line. Shelton goes in the slot where he's harder to cover on the right side. Now he steps up on the line of scrimmage. 
Cook looks the other way. Now back toward Shelton. End zone, touchdown. He beat Jamel Cook, another true freshman defensive back. And the clouds have opened up. I think it started raining while this ball was in the air. But this is something that Michigan State receivers do so well. They call them 50-50 balls. When there is coverage there, Connor Cook, R.J. Shelton, all of these guys work time and time again in practice, and they have so many reps together in a game. And that was the one thing Brian Knorr said with a guy like Cook, another young guy, he was afraid, can we make those 50-50 plays? That time Shelton made it. A nice touchdown drive in response to Indiana's score. They go 78 yards in three minutes and 10 seconds. Cook finishes it off with yet another touchdown pass on his scorecard this year. It has arrived. I mean, it is coming down in waves. I think that Connor Cook pass went so high it huh, touched the cloud. This could have a devastating effect on this game. This ball is going to <laughs> just that got in. get out of bounds. You are absolutely <laughs> right. Let's check in with Laura Rutledge. You surviving down there? And of course. It's not fair to be on the <laughs> sideline and drowning and then have your microphone yeah, go out. Well, oh, Laura, we're sorry. Yeah, she heard uh, co-defense coordinator Mike Tressel. I'll give her a record because uh, our producer told me what she was going to say, that he said, let's take advantage of this rain. They threw the ball well in the first one. Let's take advantage of it. So they'll run with Divine Redding on first down. Well, this is unbelievable. I mean, you normally see this rain in, in South Florida like this, but nowhere else. Or in August here, but not in yeah. almost November. But uh, apparently... It's not supposed to last yeah. that long. But this is just, I mean, this is hard. The ball has... Oh, he dropped it. Yeah. The, even though the field is draining well, you can see, see spots already growing, and there's no way at this level of rain that this ball is not just soaked. Hits him, hits Sudfeld right in the hands and he drops it. I mean, even if you go under center, there's no guarantee you're going to be able to get the snap. And this is not an offense, Indiana, that goes under center. So they, they're kind of stuck with what they are. It's not like you haven't practiced or played in this type of rain before, but it came on so quickly, it had to catch Indiana's offense off guard. You can't practice with the rain <laughs> this hard. I'm sorry. Artificially, you can't do it. They give it to Divine Redding, trying to get to the outside. Stood up, did not get back to the original line of scrimmage, and they'll have to punt away. And that will be easier said than done. Demetrius Cox up from his safety spot. Eric Toth will come on and hope that it's not a replay of the last play at Michigan last week. Yeah. Well, there was a punt snap over the head for Indiana against Rutgers that led to those 22 unanswered points in the fourth quarter for that comeback. So this is uh, Michigan State has had its troubles this year in special teams, and Indiana has as well, especially last week. McGarrett Kings is deep, and they came after him. And he did a great job just to get the ball out of there. That's the punter's first job, kick it in a hurry. An unbelievable deluge here that lasted four plays of Indiana's offense. And nine central after Marvel's Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. on ABC. Well, that wicked rain has basically oh. ended. It lasted for the Indiana offensive series. Clearly that storm is a Spartan fan. Yes, yes. Cook on a roll. Room to run if he wants. Does and slides <laughs> in. How long was that slide? Uh, he'd get another five <laughs> yards if they give it to him. Let's check in with Laura. Well, as you guys said, the rain has definitely subsided, but on both sidelines, they're trying to wring out towels. They're covering everything in plastic bags, trying to make sure that everything gets dried off, and of course, keeping towels ready for both quarterbacks as they prepare when they come off the sidelines to try to dry their hands off. 
That was unbelievable for four plays, Laura, the way that was coming down. And you would know more yep. than anybody standing down there in it. You know, you mentioned the under the center snap. The center, your your pants and everything get so wet that when you snap it, even if the ball is dry, the quarterback's hands can get pretty wet. Williams is in <laughs> at running back, and he picks up a couple before he stopped. And you could see the water coming up when he tried to make a cut. Yep. And both teams playing it pretty close to the vest. Second and short sometimes with a guy like, oh, yeah, you can see the feet slip right there. But a lot of times your receivers have the advantage uh, in this situation. A little surprise on sort, sir, uh, second and short with Connor Cook. You wouldn't take a throw down the field because the defensive backs, when they go to plant, not knowing where you're going, can tend to slip. Third and yard. They just haven't been able to run it. Here's a little option look. And Cook will have enough for the first down. Mark him at the 48-yard line. Not going to be confused with Marcus Mariota. And, and <laughs> well, but if you run the option, it makes the other team defend it and practice for it, no matter what type of quarterback you have. But I, I noticed there that Jack Conklin, who was battling a knee injury and missed a couple games, he's gimpy. And this is they've already lost a backup offensive tackle. This is an offensive line that has been – uh, deluge like that rain with injuries, and he was gimpy after that play. Delton Williams stays in as the running back. The pass completed underneath the Burbridge. They've already lost Jack Allen at center, and it, and it was Allen who actually moved out to left tackle when Conklin was out against Rutgers, and then Fenley went down. Allen actually bounced out to left tackle. He had been trained out there during the week by the offensive line coach, Mark Statton, who does a nice job here at Michigan State, but Allen actually got injured playing left tackle, so Michigan State does not need Conklin going down again. Price, the tight end, shifts to the far side of the formation. Cook back to throw, pump fake, now turns and looks the other way. McGarrett King, open, made the catch at the 13-yard line, and that was all Connor Cook. You take the safety to the right side with your eyes, turn and throw back to the weak side. He really does operate well. You know, we saw him last year a couple times, Mike, and he'd have a quarter or a series here where he was kind of off. I haven't seen one yet this year. He has really dialed it in for his last go around, and McGarrett Kings is shorter guy with great route running, good hands, uh, but Cook, when he's operating, he's, it's awfully hard to defend. He can show you a touch pass, and then he can drill it for 20 yards. Cook again. Tries to take off again, gets as much as he can, and gets out of bounds. He can run. He's, uh, as you mentioned, when he's running the option, doesn't uh, evoke memories of Mariota, but can get out of the pocket. He is an awfully good prospect, though. When, when he throws it, it, we were talking to Mark D'Antonio, he's one of those guys that just looks effortless. Yeah. When the ball's on a line, it just looks like he didn't even have to try to to get it going. Well, maybe more importantly, he's mobile in the pocket so he can buy himself some more time. Terry comes in, takes the Wildcat snap, gets to the 10. Now this kid can run. Boy, it looked like Terry should have maybe pitched it there. Yeah, that that tailing uh, ta that tra trailing tailback looked like he might have had some pay dirt in front of him. But this is, again, to give a little different look to get inside here. But now this is a place where Josiah Price could come into play. Actually, right now it's Jamal Lyles, a big tight end. Actually, The running back is Wilson, third and long from the 10. Cook. Miscommunication, there is a flag down. No, that was a defensive holding was why it looked like a oh, miscommunication. Okay. Yeah, As Burbridge gonna... went in, maybe yeah. he was dragged in and no, the ball was thrown yeah, out. Tyler Green got beat off the post right off the bat. Tyler Green, another one of those freshmen. We keep saying that for defensive backs in this game. Some discussion among the officiating crew. Pass interference, number three, defense in the end zone. Ball's placed at the two-yard line, first down. 
You have to play some man-on-man coverage on the outside. Burbridge, the best receiver, five games over 100 yards receiving this year. I'd say that was interference. <laughs> yeah, and you've got to you've got to be physical. And here's another young guy for Indiana. They have zero juniors and seniors in their secondary. Michigan State fans know that story with all the injuries they've had. This was by a suspension before the season, and then some uh, a good senior class last year. Williams. Inside the one. And if you're wondering, Michigan State, Madre London, uh, who didn't play last week, who was the starter early year running back out today with an ankle, and that's why you're seeing these other backs in the line of scrimmage. This presentation of college football will continue after this message and a word from our ABC station. Knocking on the door, trying to break a 7 7 tie as we start the second quarter. Pendleton the fullback, Williams is the tailback. Williams with the carry. Touchdown, Spartans. Nice block by Donovan Clark. Big number 76 who cleared the way. Well, this looks more like what a typical Michigan State offense used to look like, a bunch of bodies right around the line of scrimmage. And uh, if you're going to put that many bodies there, you better cut a hole. Because if you don't, that's a, a lot of Indiana bodies to hold you up. Nice job by the left side of that offensive line. We saw Jack Conklin was a little banged up. He gets a block, and of course, that's the right guard, Donovan Clark, who's had to play a bunch of different positions with injuries. Maybe he's blocked pulling around. Michael Geiger for the point after. High snap, they got it down. He yanked it, kissed the post, and went through. Michigan State on top by seven. We check in with Robert Flores. Robert. <laughs> 54 to 46. <laughs> that doesn't sound like an SEC <laughs> no, game, does it? No. Both teams have been able to move the ball. This game has not been a dog. <laughs> Dunn and Graham are deep. Luckily for Indiana, that rain subsided. Remember their last drive. It was raining about as hard as it can possibly rain. And there's Lucy again, knocking that ball off. Isn't it a little early? Well, Peanuts, Peanuts starts playing about this time of year, doesn't it? Yes. Yeah. Yes. So getting the Halloween with the, the great pumpkin. Both of these teams get a week off next week and need it, need it very badly. Speaking of Halloween, it comes at a great time. I, I know a lot of these guys are not really worried about what their costume is going to be, but as beat up as they've been at this time of the season, couldn't work out better for both teams to get a week off next week to go down the stretch run. Graham on the return. Hit shy of the 20 and just got back to that stripe. Take a look at today's good hands play brought to you by Allstate. Same guy two weeks in a row, Grayson yeah. Miller. Well, Grayson Miller, you know, everyone knows about the hero, Jalen Watts Jackson. But if Grayson Miller does not hit Blake O'Neill as he's going to kick it, O'Neill may have actually gotten the kick off. And then the first off, that was the last play of the game last week. And then the first offensive play of the game this week for Miller, he gets a, a tipped pass interception. So pretty good start to the career for Miller, who got his first start at safety last week. They've had some problems with Monte Nicholson not performing up to his level, so they finally put Miller in. And now Nichols comes in to get a little run. Majette is the running back. He'll get the carry Ooh. swallowed up at the line of scrimmage. Really didn't have a chance. Malik McDowell, it takes up a lot of space, even though he only wears that number four, 275 pounds. Here's a guy who is almost six foot seven and, and plays really low and really quick. It is so rare to see a guy with this 
combination of length, power, and also ability to play low in the middle. He's really special. Nine carries, 13 yards for the Indiana running game. Now they'll go back to the air, and Sudfeld completes it out to the 27-yard line to Simi Cobbs. Demetrius Cox made the stop. And this is where third and two, where Indiana can stretch the ball out to the side. Wouldn't be surprised if you saw some type of wide receiver screen or something. Really challenge with two safeties back. Fake the running play, and they do go to the perimeter. Cobbs makes the catch. Dragged out of bounds after he's got the first down. And Howard is not in there, so you have to wonder, is that ankle bothering him again? Simi Cobbs working one-on-one -on -one outside with Demetrius Cox. And Cobbs, a big, tall guy, great hands. Didn't play much high school football until his senior year. Was a, basically a linebacker, played some receiver. So he's still figuring it out. Had a wonderful catch last week against Rutgers. But he's tough to defend one-on-one. -on -one. Good throw and catch that time for a first down. Here's good news. Howard's back in the ball game for Indiana. Number eight goes out in the flat. They try to throw him the ball, and he saw the coverage coming. Reached up one hand, but he was looking at the linebacker <laughs> and lost the ball. And you could see Bulla, Riley Bulla, of the middle linebacking Bullas <laughs> over there having a word. But Riley's brother, Max, who is a starting middle linebacker here now with the Texans, and they have a younger brother now, Byron Bulla, who is a backup middle linebacker we may see today. Good block by Howard to give Sudfeld some time, but that ball is knocked away by Darian Harris, who was on the Butkus list this year as the linebacker candidate for the best in the country. Reschke was applying the pressure. I'm not sure Sudfeld's feet didn't slip just a bit before he threw that. Nice job by the linebacker there. Coming underneath, big third and 10 now for Indiana. Blitz coming. Sudfeld steps up and throws. Got it into Michigan State Territory at the 49 to Mitchell Page. Had his first career 100-yard game last week. Nice move by Sudfeld. What a step up. Good job by Howard. Got over there just a touch late on the block, but great step up. They give it to Howard. Look at the body lean. He just powers forward for about six. Oh, he's gimpy. Yeah, yeah. He, he, uh, you know. You get that left ankle, you get an ankle, especially as a running back. There's just so much cutting, so many times that you get hit. He's not looking uh, healthy at all. And against the defensive front like Michigan State, like we saw against Ohio State, you can't even be a 10% off your game and expect to get anything done. Sudfeld under pressure again. Escapes again and throws it through the hands of Simi Cobb. Boy, that, that was almost a terrific play over to Simi Cobbs. Throw maybe just a little hard by Sudfeld, but Cobbs is working his way back. I really like Sud. Both of these quarterbacks, when you study them, they're yes, fun. They're, they're good players. They're, they're gamers. Uh, and there's Howard trying to get up on that left ankle. Doubt we'll see him again. But, you know, you're in a place, if you're Indiana, I think you're thinking of four downs here. You're on the plus side of the field. I don't know that you need it all right now. Sudfeld with time and throws that at Cobb's feet. Got you know, a lot of traffic there. Against Ohio State, Kevin Wilson said he was going to be very aggressive and go for it on fourth and inside five on the plus side of the field. Here, sending out the punt unit, and I think it's because he feels a little better with the weather. I, you know, this is a place where fourth and five, you would consider going for it on the plus side of the field, but a little different feeling, I think, today for Kevin Wilson than what he had against Ohio State with the weather. Uh, some turnovers that uh, maybe it's best to punt it away. Toth will punt. That's McGarrett Kings who waits back at the 10. Pressure up the middle, but he gets it away. Wobbly kick that bounces ahead into the end zone. 44-yard punt, no return. And it will be Michigan State ball when we come back. Already up by seven. Frogs that fell from the sky during that <laughs> rain. Locusts are next. Little toss to L.J. Scott. And this Michigan State ground game is 
inert. Yeah, and, and you, you've just seen, you know, coming into the season, we were talking about the strength for Indiana as the offensive line. Michigan State really felt like they had four returning starters up front, and then Jack Allen goes down. There have been a couple injuries, a tackle. They just haven't found Keeler, missed three games at right tackle with an injury. 79, and so uh, they just have not been able to find the push that they had hoped. And for Connor Cook in his senior year, it's it's really having to become his show, which is probably just fine by him, but uh, it's always good to have a run game going. And it's just fine for your offense because he has been terrific. I mean, that one's batted down at the line of scrimmage. The interesting thing yet about that offensive line is a couple of those guys were preseason Big Ten candidates and uh, national watch list for everything you could have for alignment. Ball just tipped right at the line of scrimmage. The, the window was closing. An excellent job by Marcus Oliver. He was in coverage of middle linebacker and then filled the hole it looked like that Connor Cook wanted to throw through, and then he throws over, and big Ralph Green the third gets a hand on it. Four wide receivers bunched. Now they bring Scott back into the backfield. Indiana may have jumped, but the pressure doesn't get there, and R.J. Shelton will make the grab. We'll check the flag. Well, that was Nick Mangieri, the senior. I think he knows that uh, Jack Conklin might have a bum uh, leg. He tried to get a jump on that snap. He did, but it was just a, uh, a skosh early. Maybe that's the... Defense, number 66. That penalty's declined. Play resulted in a first down. It may have been the key to his seven sacks this year. <laughs> yeah. Is that quick start. Well, he, he does have a really good stop top of the screen right here. Yeah, just uh, woo. I mean, maybe maybe three inches into the neutral zone. That was awfully close to timing it. But then, of course, Connor Cook steps up and delivers a strike, so it wouldn't matter. The series starts at the 39. Cook on the keeper. Got a block. Hurdles his own man and gets to the 40. And then it appeared there was some contact as he had to slide into the bench. Gain of 21 for Connor Cook. 325 pound Benny McGowan. Excuse me, that's Brian Allen there. McGowan is the, uh, in at center now. They've actually switched to put McGowan in, so it was both McGowan and Allen pulling out. McGowan, who has played a bunch in the last couple of years. Ooh, that's. Let's watch there at the end. That, is that the Connor Cook hurdle? Well, both guys are slipping. Not yes. much of a bump there. I, I wonder if it's because of the rain, that tarp over there got so slick. That didn't look like much of a bump. So the running yards have come from Cook. Now he's under pressure. Throws a stop and go intended for Burbridge. But the timing was messed up by the Indiana rush. They hit one of these last week to McGarrett Kings against Michigan. Whoop, that's there. <laughs> that's, that, that's a touchdown. Yeah, Rashard yeah, fans' yeah. heart just yeah. jumped up into his throat. Yeah, they hit a touchdown to Kings last week late in the game to cut the score against Michigan, and that time they had it. Rashard Fant, number 16, second in the country in passes broken up this year with 16. Little bitty guy, 177 pounds out there in the corner. Set up the screen, and it's broken up beautifully. Marcus Oliver and Clyde Newton were out there. They read it perfectly. Oliver, a guy who blew out uh, his ACL last year. You can see the brace on his left knee. And that was a big blow to this defense. He read this right away. He had man coverage, and, and a lot of times you'll leave the man cover the screen on against man coverage, and you hope to get him picked off, but Oliver actually beat the block. Yeah, he got hit in the side and he yeah. still got there. Yeah. Third and ten now at the Indiana 41-yard line. And remember, it's been an adventure, meaning in the bad way for the kicking game for Michigan State. You're not in field goal range, not even, you know, you're probably 10, 15 yards from feeling comfortable. Blitz coming, they didn't get there. The pass underneath is battered away by Fant. That is his 17th pass breakup. With, with a little bit of wind and just unbelievably, all of a sudden, you're Michigan State. Indiana bringing the blitz. It was picked up, but Cook not quite comfortable, didn't quite get much zip on this. And Burbage, even though, the, but the ball was put on his hands. That's a tough catch, but... Uh, you expect that guy to make it. And all of a sudden, on the 41-yard line of their opponent, Michigan State is punting the ball away. This is not a good 
Not a good turnout for this good offense at that point. Horrible kick by Hartbarger, but he gets a great bounce. That thing didn't look like it got more than six feet off the ground. 35-yard kick with the bounce, and Howard going to try to gut it out again as Indiana's running back. Mike, Jordan Howard wants to play so bad. He came off the field and was jumping around trying to test out that left ankle. The Indiana athletic trainer came over to him and asked him if he was good, and he nodded yes, but I've seen him grimacing in pain as he's continued to try to test out this ankle. Well, we saw against Ohio State he tried to go on a bum ankle, and it was not smart. I, 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 at some point, the adults have to stand up and say, you know, you're not ready to go. Let's see if he even has the ability to cut now. Straight ahead here, monster hole for him. Still on his feet. Lost the ball. And it looks like Indiana has it back at the 44. And even though he got a huge gain on that play, he's not running like the kid we saw before. No, I, I don't know that he has the speed to take this to the house, but he you can see right here, just not very much, uh, not a good job by Kari Willis, but as that ball is stripped, an excellent job. I believe it was Mitchell Page who comes in. What a, a Arjun Calhoun. Calhoun. Yeah, what a good job knocking that ball away. But I believe it was Mitchell Page who cleaned up the mess. But for Indiana, I know that looked like a big run for Howard, but he just doesn't look like the same guy. And with Devine Redding and Mike Majette available now, I'm not sure why you would push it. Sudfeld rifles this one complete down to the 39-yard line. This kid really can drill a football if he has to. Miller tried to take the ball away at the end of the play. Damon Grant, boy, he did step into that, didn't he? Damon he did, Graham sure. on the catch, and as he slid over, Grayson Miller was trying to pull it away, but a good catch by Graham. And what an answer for Indiana. They get a stop on, the, on their side of the field on the 41. There's nothing wrong with this offense. If the defense gives them half a chance, they can stay in the game with anybody. We saw that against Ohio State. Somebody, Howard swallowed up here. Somebody upstairs for Indiana needs to say, this guy's not 100%. It's just, I know he wants to grit it out. I know it's his last chance. He transferred from UAB, but it is not up to the trainer to say, are you good to go? It is up to the coaches and the trainers to look and see, is he healthy enough to go? And I know he had the long run. But that was a huge hole, and you do have uh, uh, good backups here that have proven they can do it. So I just, if, if I'm upstairs for Indiana, I'm saying, can we please sit eight down and get some ice on that angle going into the bye week? The one thing I'm thinking is if they're telling him and the doctors are saying, you can't hurt it anymore, yeah, but then I a, can see where they're trying to play it. Majette comes in for Howard. Sudfeld with time, now under pressure, and down he goes. Finally, Joel Heath got there. And there is a marker down as well. If it's a hold, they'll probably decline it, just take the play. Howard is on the sideline jogging up and down, trying to keep that ankle loose. Well, you could see in the open field, even though he made Kari Willis Personal miss. Personal foul, hands to the face. Ooh. Number 98 on the wow. defense. 15-yard penalty results wow. in an automatic first down. That's Demetrius Cooper, and how huge is that? You take away the sack, you take away the loss, the down doesn't count, and they're marching it down to the Michigan State 26-yard line. What a change in field position. At top of the screen, this is Cooper working on the right tackle. Yeah, you can see his left hand getting up there onto the Demetric uh, Camille face mask. What a huge penalty, holy cow. Majette goes in motion. Sudfeld looks the other way, throws underneath to Jones, and Jones is planted down at the 24, and a flag immediately thrown by the official right there, and Mark D'Antonio says, for what? Well, he'll find out eventually. <laughs> but that was on Colhoun, Arjun Colhoun. The only thing I could think 
they could you could conceivably call unnecessary roughness he picked him up and drove him into the ground but and the referee did just say body slam no no, no, I, you I can't, can't. no he's turning him over to, to to make the tackle i mean he's this actually is football fought. isn't yeah, it this is not a good call uh, Cal Calhoun is doing what you're supposed to do, which is when you start losing your feet, you do an alligator roll to get the man on the ground. That's not a good call. Not a huge deal, though, because of where they are on the field. You don't get a lot of yardage, but I agree with these fans. That's not a good call. But you do get an automatic first down, and Howard is back in the ball game. They start this series of downs at the 11. Sudfeld, screen back the other way. Jones, touchdown! And these fans are going to go nuts. Wes Martin out in the middle of that screen through a block that sprung it. Indiana offense is feisty. Well, if you had Kevin Wilson as your head coach, you'd be feisty too because that <laughs> yes. guy, that guy coaches hard, man. He goes, he's a very positive guy. He talks a lot about having fun, but they grind. They work hard in practice. Five plays, 94 yards for Indiana, helped by an illegal hands to the face and a very questionable body slam, which, boy, he missed it. Oaks yanked one left, hit the post, and they trailed by one. There's the body slam that gave him a first down at the 11 after the personal foul call on hands to the face. It resulted in a touchdown yanked by Griffin Oaks who will kick off. He's one of the top kickoff guys in the entire country. Coming into this game, 32 of 45 kickoffs had gone for touchbacks. Tied for fourth in the country, number one in the Big Ten. And let's see if that uh, one point plays into it as we come down to the end. RJ Shelton does. and Delton Williams are deep. And it's off the shelf and out of bounds. Tonight, ESPN has a big doubleheader for you, starting with a really good SEC matchup. College football primetime presented by Hilton. Number 15, Texas A&M in Oxford to take on number 24, Ole Miss at 7 Eastern. Then out to the Pac-12, Stanford, which has made it all the way back to the top 10, will play host to Washington at 10.30 Eastern. We saw Stanford in the opener against Northwestern. They did not look like a top 10 team, and Northwestern handled them. It was as conservative a offensive play calling as I've ever seen, and they've taken the reins off out there at Stanford. And unfortunately for my alma mater, Washington, Jake Browning may not be able to go quarterback. I think it might get ugly tonight. Another negative play. They tried to give it to McGarrett Kings, and Ralph Green, the third, stuffed the play. McGowan in at center, and they just left him unblocked. You do that sometimes, you'll leave somebody unblocked in the middle, but that, that again looks like a mistake. Remember, a lot of guys going in and out. McGowan, probably the third string center now in there with Jack Allen out. Brian Allen has played some center, but there has been a couple of miscommunications it's looked like today for the Spartans. It is a rather large individual to leave unblocked. Mangieri. May have jumped offside. Fant with a terrific defensive play. And One that, hand touching the receiver, the other going back for the ball. That was amazing technique. And that's what the those those 50-50 balls. Defense number 33. Five-yard penalty. Replay second down. Zach that's on Shaw. Zach Shaw. Yeah, I thought it was Mangieri as well. Both of them trying to get a jump on that left tackle. Conklin, who looks a little iffy on that bum leg. But that was terrific coverage by Fant. That's one of those 50-50 balls where Connor Cook throws it in the area and knows his receiver is going to come back to it. So that time Fant came up. Yeah, maybe. Fant's Fant's out there saying, I got your 50-50 right. right here. Right, because if Fant doesn't make that play, it's complete. The offside doesn't matter, and they're out near midfield here. Holmes is the running back. Nobody has stood out today at that spot. Holmes gets the ball in a swing. Takes it up to about the 32. 
And these fans below us here where we're situated in a press box still really upset about that personal foul call. Anytime there's a tackle by Indiana now, they're screaming for a <laughs> yeah, flag. For, yeah, that was definitely didn't look to me like a personal foul. But this is a big third and two here. They have the, Michigan State does not have a great run game. In years past, this is where you'd give it to Jeremy Lankford or someone like that, but they just don't have that. Madre London is out. So don't be surprised if this is some type of run action pass by Connor Cook. Holmes to tailback, and it is. Under pressure, he'll go to his tight end, Paul Lang, who only has six catches on the year before that one. And that's exactly what they did, and Connor Cook may be hurt. He's grabbing that right rib. Wow, right in the Ooh. midsection. Good clean tackle by Clyde Newton. But you could see Connor Cook, when he got up, he was holding that right side, and he is down now. That looked to be a clean tackle by Clyde Newton, led with the shoulder low, was not going for a targeting to the head or neck area, and, and he, Cook, was in immediate pain when Newton unloaded into his midsection. Looks like he does have a rib protector, but a lot of times those will move away. There is a space in there where you can get hit. We'll check on Connor Cook when we come back. It's a one-point game in East Lansing. First down. And fans were really outraged about it. Then this play happens. Connor Cook is buried, and there is no personal foul. And the Michigan State fans were very upset as Cook came over, and they saw the replay. Cook was told to go down on the field because they wanted to figure out what they could do for the backup. They brought Tyler O'Connor in to run it, but... We've seen Cook warming up. This saves them a timeout, so Cook comes back in. If you go down on the field with an injury, if you want to stay in, you'd have to use a timeout. I think it's a smart job by Michigan State getting close to the end of the half to send out O'Connor for a run play. Cook comes back in. He looked better when he got up, but let's be clear. I don't think either of those was a penalty. Agreed. I think the one on Colhoun was a mistaken call, and I think the hit against Cook was a very clean hit by Newton. It looked in slow motion like it we may have been late, but if you looked at it regular speed, uh, he was closing on the hit as the ball was leaving his hand. Second and ten. The running game just hasn't been there. It's been all Connor Cook. He's throwing this one. Crowd wanted a flag for pass interference on Andre Brown. They won't get it. He was covering McGarrett Kings to the near side here. And these fans are really getting into it, thinking of that these are missed calls. But Andre Brown, a true freshman, working one-on-one -on -one with McGarrett Kings. Take a look at the left side of your screen. Come on, Natalie. And uh, both guys were using their hands. Not a, uh, As I was watching it live, it did not look like P.I. because Kings put his hands up as well to push off for the long throw pump fake. So third and long, stunt up front, they don't get there. The pass caught by McGarrett Kings here, just beyond the sticks, it will be a first down for Michigan State. Nice throw by Connor Cook. And Kings comes right back after what looked like maybe a pass interference. Finds a nice little hole in the zone, and Cook, who looked like he may have a rib or chest injury just a moment ago, fits it right in there. He did look okay when we were watching him during the break throw the ball. Didn't look like he was wincing in pain. Looked like maybe the wind was knocked out of him on that hit. Williams, number 22, the running back. Have a fullback in front of him. Williams will get the call. And let's get down to Laura, see if she has more on Connor Cook. Laura? When Cook came off the field, everybody on the Michigan State sideline asked him if he's okay, and he looked around and said, calm down, guys, I'm fine. But he said, my hands are still wet. He went over and dried his hands off, and it is still wet down on the field. All right, thanks, Laura. 5-11 and counting in the first half. <laughs> if I'm Mark D'Antonio, I'd love this drive to last another five minutes yes. and uh, see if we can't get out of here with an eight-point lead or go for two and a nine-point, maybe a two-point score going into the half. Cook sitting in the pocket. Throws to his tight end, Paul Lang, and Lang makes the catch. 21 yards and a first down Spartans. Excellent pocket by the offensive line. And, you know, we keep seeing Paul Lang makes me wonder. Josiah Price, who is a, had a great game last year against Indiana, has been battling an ankle injury. 
He's the best receiver of the group. Lang more of a blocker, but Lang showing on the corner route over the shoulder. I can make that catch, too. Excellent throw. I, I, it's amazing the accuracy Connor Cook is playing with here in his senior year. There, uh, There's no throw off by more than a foot, foot and a half. He's really on it. He has been sensational. It's no wonder he's 30-3 and three as a starter. Fly sweep, Shelton. Lost his balance a little bit, but slowed him down. Made it to the 27-yard line, and Chase Dutra, one of the safeties, made the stop. I'm watching uh, Brian Allen, the left guard, number 65. His brother Jack is out, but I was just watching Allen come back to the line of scrimmage. He's hurting. He's holding something in his hand. Yeah, they're just banged up Boy. all along that line. Talk about a week off they need. Desperately. Coming up for both of these teams. But you don't want to lose Brian Allen, a young guy who's really playing into a top lineman for Michigan State. And one of the reasons the running game hasn't gone anywhere. Cook, <laughs> another perfect pass down to the 15-yard line. It was just drilled in there to Jamal Lyles. And they're going away a little bit from their wide receivers and favoring their tight ends. Lyles, a guy who made great progress in the past game as a tight end, and you can't throw that ball any better. The safety, Crawford, is to the inside, so you put it low and away to a big body, let him go down and get it. Pretty good tribute to Brown and Fant, the corners, that they're throwing over the middle and trying to avoid these guys. They've played very well. Got one on one down at the bottom. Scott. No holes. None. You know, I think people watching this game wondering about the college football playoff and where does Michigan State fit. If they win out, it won't matter. It just won't. They'll, they'll be in. But I do think they've got a long way to go. I'm not sure without a running game and uh, the struggles that they've had in their secondary. 18 rushes for 32 yards for Michigan State today. Um, I, don't, I don't know how that would hold up against the top four teams. But you went out in this conference, you're in. So... If they do that, they'll get a chance to prove if it works or not. Second long, high snap. Pressure on Cook. Gets rid of it and completes it to McGarrett Kings for very little yardage. We talked at the beginning of the telecast about lack of respect not only for Cook, but lack of respect for Michigan State as a team as they complete this one to McGarrett Kings. The voters in the AP poll have not shown them very much love either. They do not have a first place vote, even though they're undefeated and ranked seventh in the country. And I'm not sure I disagree with that yet. I'm, I'm not sure that they're the best team in the country. I know they're undefeated, but they've got a long way to go. And they have a knack at winning, so don't think that they can't do it. And uh, if they can get healthy with this week off, Kevin Wilson deciding to take a timeout for Indiana. Indiana I like Indiana calls their first timeout. The timeout this will be there a timeout. allows uh, allows his defense a minute to catch their breath and save, try to save a little bit of time. Well, let's take a look. Especially defensively. He looked 21 years old to you. <laughs> <laughs> Big third down here, third and six. And the sun is out as brightly as it's been in two weeks here. Yeah, if you were going to throw over to the left corner of the end zone here, this is what you'd see. That's the far corner of the end zone. So if you throw a fade or something into that corner, that sun's going to be right. Might have a, an effect on these guys. Blitz coming. Cook throws that direction. Overthrows and intercepted. Picked off by the sophomore Richard fan. This kid can play. I'm sorry, 16 and 16. <laughs> yes, Burbridge. I am terribly sorry. That's Burbridge with a touchdown. And Cook goes right to that side. Little pump fake gets hit again as he throws it. Wow, that's a good move. Fant got caught looking inside. Sun right in his eyes. And you're expecting Fant, who's been playing well, to I'm be there. I'm watching Fant with all those <laughs> pass breakups, and he got beat by his opposite number. Burbridge is really something with those double moves, something that uh, he and McGarrett Kings and Cook have worked so many times to perfection. It was a great drive under pressure. Connor Cook now second in school history to the record holder, Kirk Cousins, 
who had 66, and on that drive, he got hurt and then completed eight out of nine passes for 67 yards and a touchdown. Well, now Indiana, because of that timeout, able to uh, preserve a little clock. A little surprised Michigan State maybe didn't think about two points there. Go up nine, two scores. Uh, too it's early. a little early. Well, how about the athletic trivia question? Last week, Connor Cook became the second quarterback in school Affleck. history to defeat the Michigan Wolverines three straight times. Who was the first? You should get this, especially if, if you're a Michigan State fan, and especially if you were listening to the last I'll, statistic that we gave you. I'll give a hint. <laughs> the head coach of Michigan State is now 7-1 and one against the in-state rivals. So there's two, three game winning streaks in there. Won by that guy. Still figured out. 137 left in the half. Graham on the return. And Graham taking down to 23. And we check in with Robert Flores. Robert. Certainly can rack up some points in the Big 12, can't we? Mm -hmm. Now it's about those two timeouts for Indiana. You can play the entire field, but don't let a play go by where 15, 20 seconds go off the clock before you call the timeout. Howard. Well, he may be gimpy, but he's still out running people. I know, but Divine Redding is a really good explosive running back, and this guy just looks... 10%, 15% slower. I, I know he's getting some big chunk yardage, but Redding is a guy who has explosive ability. Just surprised that Howard stays in the game. He's got seven carries for 60 yards, and you know he's not 100%. Mm -hmm. He is a heck of a back. What a big run on first down. Get out of bounds. Sudfeld with time. Touch pass intended for Jones. He's double covered. Michigan State obviously not expecting a off-tackle run on first and 10 with a minute 30 or so on the clock against Indiana, so they got caught off guard. Redding now in the game at running back for Indiana. This is a very explosive good guy out of the backfield. Sudfeld, double pump, got it to Page. Blockers in front. Page inside the Indiana 45-yard line. And here is where you see the youth of the secondary for Michigan State. We showed the injury chart earlier of the guys who are out. Monty Nicholson, one of the sophomores, has been playing, but it was a missed tackle right about eight yards down the field that became the big game for Indiana. Time for Sudfeld. Deep has a man wide open. Touchdown. Simi Cobbs. We've got two unbelievable quarterbacks in this game. Cobbs beat Demetrius Cox so bad that he had to slow down and wait for that ball to get there. Cox, a guy who's moved between corner and safety. Oh, the safety bit. That's not Cox. Yeah, that's the safety. That's uh, number 27, Kari Willis, one of the true freshmen in there at safety. Uh, that was a deep cover two, meaning the safety has deep, and Willis, a true freshman, making his second start, bites on it. And the question becomes, did Indiana score too soon? Minute and seven seconds left and three timeouts for Connor Cook. I will always say no. If you <laughs> right. score, you don't score. give it yeah. back. <laughs> well, that, that drive, that's not on 77 Cox. yards only took 25 yeah. seconds. Is Sudfeld any good? Well, and, and he... Brought the safeties down. We were talking about the explosive uh, ability of Cobbs and how tall he is, but that one was the safety, Kari Willis. There have been, for Michigan State, just a, a ton of plays like that in the secondary with all of the injuries they've had, as good as they were last year. This has just been a struggle for them in 15. Well, let's answer our AFLAC trivia question, which was Connor Cook became the second quarterback in school history to defeat the Michigan Wolverines Affleck. three straight times. Who was the first? Yes, you're right. The answer was Kirk Cousins, who did it 
2009, 10, and 11. He's now the starting quarterback for the Washington Redskins. Yeah, and Connor Cook's going to be the starting quarterback for some NFL team you soon. And you think here, uh, he just looks the part. Boy, is he terrific in the pocket. He can run a little bit, an unbelievable arm, accurate. And you think of Michigan State, you'd never think of it as quarterback you, no. but they're starting to put some guys in that lead. And you know what? I'm with you. I think Sudfeld's going to get a shot with somebody and make someone's roster. I do, too. 107 left in the first half. Look at these numbers. Both of them, well, they combined for almost 400 yards. And that will just scratch that INT off. That was a perfect throw by Sudfeld on the first play of the game. That was dropped, popped up in the air. It was a nice interception by Michigan State. So for Sudfeld coming back for his senior year, here's a guy, they beat Missouri last year. Then he hurts his shoulder, his non-throwing shoulder, against Michigan State. Uh, Xander Diamant, a, a true freshman who they expected a redshirt, has to start, who's now unfortunately at home with a shoulder injury. So last year they lost Sudfeld. They lost him for a bit this year, but put on that glove. You can see the glove on the throwing hand when it started raining, and it uh, sure working. Cook throws underneath. He leaks it quickly to R.J. Shelton. That's out of bounds to stop the clock. This will be fun to watch. This will be fun to watch to see if Brian Knorr, the defense coordinator, decides to bring any pressure or try to play coverage here against Connor Cook. They've been able to get some pressure with just the down lineman, which Michigan was able to do. But, boy, you scored awfully quickly. There's Brian Knorr. You're, you scored awfully quick if you're Indiana with a quarterback like Cook as hot as, as he is in this game, giving it back this soon. The last time they brought a blitz, Cook beat it with one of his tight ends. Now they throw the uh, flanker screen, and they got it to Shelton. But right there was Clyde Newton, the linebacker. It's the second time Oliver. And Marcus Oliver as well. Yeah, and Oliver, that's the second time he snuffed out a, a screen quickly. Blitz coming. Cook hangs in there and got Burbridge to the 47-yard line. Excellent blitz pickup. Gerald Holmes in there at running back. And what a terrific throw. You want to talk about a tight window. You have Oliver underneath. You have Fant over the top. Perfect timing. Drilled it right in there. And good timeout because of uh, everyone trying to get down the field for Michigan State with three timeouts. That's a, that's a really nice use of probably saving 15 seconds. If you have other things to do on Saturday, don't miss any of the action. While you're on the go, you can stream any game live. Download the Watch ESPN app or go to watchespn.com. Well, if you're Connor Cook and, and you really have to work, and you've worked this, think of how many times he's worked this at the end of practice. Okay, you've got two, two timeouts, 39 seconds. So I'm not sure that the run game even figures in here because I, I, you don't want to use think. those timeouts. Remember, the, the, the field goal game, they're not comfortable until they get to about the 20-25, the way that's been going for Michigan State. So, you know, you're looking at you still need, call it 20 yards to pick up. But what you don't want to do is have anything, you have those timeouts, don't let the clock run more than seven or eight seconds on any play if possible. Just saw Michael Geiger. Tight end right down the middle again, Josiah Price. 31 yards. And they have really used the tight end well, and all at once, they are in the red zone. And let's watch how much time. They're going to try to get a playoff here. Let's see how much time goes off this clock. Cook goes for Kings. Kings wants a flag, will not get it. Fant on the coverage. Wow, they, they did it. Michigan State did an awesome job of getting this playoff with zero seconds coming off. No, there's not, that's not P.I. Both guys are using their hands. Fant's not grabbing. If you're going to allow the receivers to use their hands, you have to allow the defensive backs to do the same. But what an awesome job by Michigan State not burning a timeout or spiking the ball and wasting a play there after the first down, and the clock started right at the snap. Good job. Fant can really play some man-to-man, -man, can't he? Second and ten, pressure coming on Cook. Throws underneath, and for one of the few times today, a poorly thrown ball trying to hit Josiah Price. You know, you're sitting here as this clock's going down for Michigan State. Michael Geiger, just five of nine, their kicker on the year. So just, he's had two blocked. This feels like a place where maybe you might want to throw one into the end zone if you're Michigan State. 
You're not comfortable that you're gonna, even going to get three the way it's been going on that unit. Still plenty of time. You can throw it in the middle of the field. Blitz coming. And Cook trying to change the play. Pressure in his face and overthrows this one. Burbridge and Fant again. Well, that looked like confusion from the start. Cook was swinging his arms, trying to show the blitz was coming. I think trying to get attention of his yeah. receivers. Indiana didn't show it until late. Yeah. He was trying to change the play and not fall down, apparently. <laughs> he was just trying. He saw the blitz coming. But, boy, what a what a, a nice stop for Indiana, for Michigan State. What looked like a very promising drive, ending in just a field goal try, which has not been a gimme for them this year. This Geiger from 35. He's had three close misses of the four. Bad snap. The holder's going to pick it up and try to run with it, and that play just comes apart. Marty Max sued. Took the high snap, didn't think he could get it down in time. So they don't even get the field goal try. They won last week on a bad special teams play. Yep. And they've had some of their own. And that was a high snap that McSood from Tabor Pepper couldn't handle and get down. It was just a little bit high. And there are the special teams problems from Michigan State. They allowed a kickoff return of 100 yards early this year, a punt return against Oregon for 81 yards. They've had some muff snap punts in their punting game, and all of a sudden, what looked like a super promising drive at the end of the half implodes. And you know what's going through the holder's mind at that point. Oh, crap. <laughs> yeah, don't, <laughs> this don't is not going like, to end well. Don't look like the guy from Michigan right no. now. And Indiana very comfortable with where they are right now. They're going to take a knee and go to the locker room. Down by one. That was an exciting first half. And for Michigan State, they get the ball back. So Connor Cook can go right back to work after a nice drive comes up with uh, goose egg at the end. And both of the quarterbacks were absolutely sensational in the first half. Even with getting hit in the ribs and thinking that Cook may have gone out, he was absolutely. all money. Let's go down to Laura Rutledge. Laura. There ends a promising drive. What did you see with the special teams right there? A high snap. Yeah, high snap. You can't get it down, so that's a big problem. We've got to continue to just keep continuing to work on specials, special teams things. But, uh, you know, got opportunity to get, in the, to get in the end zone, don't get in the end zone, and then, you know, two plays there in the end zone. Got to play cover two. Be deep as the deepest on the post. You know this Indiana offense and Nate Sudfeld can be dangerous. What adjustments do you need to see from your defense? Well, we need to play better technique. You know, and not get outflanked on things. And, uh, you know, we had one thing. We went from third and 18 to all of a sudden first down, and then it becomes a touchdown. So, got to get things fixed. Thanks, Coach. At the half, our score, Michigan State 21, Indiana 20. When we come back, absolutely terrific this afternoon. And that's part of our AT&T strong performance. Well, they both played very strong. We knew Connor Cook had the big numbers. And studying uh, Sudfeld, Nate Sudfeld, as we did the Ohio State game where he got hurt. These guys both very accurate. They've both been working against pockets as they've collapsed here. Of course, the 50-50 ball, they call it here at Michigan State, where they throw it up and let people catch it. Then a slip screen to Jones gets the score. Connor Cook not to be outdone. Once again, a little pump fake finds Burbridge for the touchdown. Then not to be outdone is Sutfeld, who finds the safety from Michigan State. Bite on an underneath route, underneath route hits Semi Cobbs. And then Connor Cook drives Michigan State down, looking for another score. And a special teams gaff caused Michigan State a chance to three more points at the end of the half. Oaks kicking to Shelton a yard deep. He'll bring it out. R.J. Shelton with a seam. Still on his feet, 35-40. And knocked out of bounds as he crossed midfield. 58-yard return. Laura caught up with Kevin Wilson moments ago. Thanks, Coach. Your defense with a big stop to keep Michigan State out of the end zone right before halftime. How have they handled Michigan State's offense so far? Well, we've given up a bunch of yards. Now, Connor's played well. He's thrown it a lot, made a lot of big plays. So uh, we're fortunate to be in it. We're playing hard. We got lucky and made a couple offensive plays. Um, we got to do our best to get it in the fourth quarter, make it a four quarter game. We noticed Jordan Howard still dealing with that ankle injury. What's his status going forward? I mean, he's good. They, they said he'd be no worse uh, for the worry in playing. 
Uh, we got next week off. He thought he was full go so we'll, uh, we'll keep mixing all the backs, but he'll be playing. All right. Thanks, Thank Coach. You. Thank you, Laura. Thank you, Coach. And L.J. Scott will start the second half at tailback as this series begins at the Indiana 42-yard line. And Shelton will get the carry. You know Mark D'Antonio would love to establish some kind of running game. It produced only 31 yards in the first half. And uh, the, one of the strengths coming into the season for Michigan State was hopefully their offensive line, but we've documented at the start all the guys who were banged up. And at the end of the half, we saw Brian Allen look like he was hurt. I noticed that Benny McGowan, the guy who's been playing at center, has a, his left arm looks like he's having a hard time working. And there's Jack Allen, who's the normal starting center, out still with an ankle injury he suffered against Rutgers. And McGowan had been the starting right guard. They're just trying to mix and match all over the place. Cook with time, throws underneath to Burbridge. Burbridge makes his fifth catch of the day. He's thrown to the ground, and the fans are arguing for a flag again. They have just been beside themselves most of the afternoon. Yeah, they had the tackle by Colhoun that looked very similar to that. A little more violent on the throwdown, but the fans here very much remember that penalty on a touchdown drive by Indiana, wanting it again. Not, not a penalty. That should not be called, but... The, uh, the fans here are still a little upset about that body slam personal foul call that did not look like a body slam. Shelton again. This time a little space. Ball came loose at the end of the play, and I think they're going to say yeah. he was down or got it back. They were already marking it. Even if it is a fumble which it is. He got it right back, scooped it. And if you're going to fumble, you might as well fumble it right where your belly's going to be. But that was a fumble. They No need to review it because Michigan State obviously recovered. And this is amazing. It was a gain of four. That's the longest rushing play they've mm. had today by a running back. Unreal. Connor Cook has picked up some yards. Cook overthrown. Boy, this is, this is going to be tough for Michigan State. The, the, the offensive line just disintegrates during this pass play. Connor Cook, who had pressure all last week against Michigan, just gets crushed again. And, you know, I, you just keep thinking about, I know we've got a long way to go in this game, but if, if Michigan State wins out and can be undefeated playing Ohio State, I'm not sure how well they're going to hold up against that front. Joey Bosa, Adolphus Washington might be the best interior lineman we've seen yes. this year. Um, I'm, I'm just not sure how well they're going to hold up against that that front against Ohio State, if in fact they're able to get there undefeated. That was Darius Rayner who planted him, third and six, showing blitz, and they're coming. Cook hangs in there, throws underneath, and just off target. It was intended for Kings, and Jamal Cook was with him stride for stride, but that one was on Connor Cook. The blitz came, the offensive line did, and, and running backs did their job and picked it up. Good coverage. No, no sign to the field yeah. goal team. It's fourth down. They're going for it. Yeah, we, we've already seen the problems that uh, Michigan State has, so not surprised here on fourth and six. And this is all about Connor Cook and the three receivers to his right, or excuse me, to Cook's left. So Geiger watches. Cook throws and dropped. There's the flag. R.J. Shelton had it and lost it, and the Indiana folks are upset now. Jamal Cook was there. He pleads his case. Pass interference, defense, number 20, foul, foul, automatic, first down. The true freshman. Yeah, way too much contact. You know, and for, for Cook, unfortunately, he was in great position. He just had a little too much contact as the ball was coming. Uh, close one. I, I think that probably is defensive pass interference, but it wasn't that bad. And Cook just had bad body position. High snap to Connor Cook. Throws the post. Tipped incomplete. That was intended for a starting tight end, Josiah Price. And Cook is just into it with his offensive line right now. That ball looked like it had a little too much heat on it. I'm not sure that last play was pass interference, but if they don't call it, 
<laughs> These fans are going to lose their mind. Well, I, I would hope the officials aren't worried about that. <laughs> but uh, that it wasn't that bad. I think it was pass interference. But uh, that throw there, he, Cook had Price wide open near the goal line, threw it high and hot. Second and ten. Shelton in the backfield with Cook. And now Shelton will get the toss. Cuts it back, makes one man miss inside the 10. Needed to get to the five for a first down. Shelton doing his Ezekiel Elliott impersonation. Elliott, of course, a high hurdler in high school, has taken to jumping over people. Nice play calling it, Shelton. Now you have a third and short. And I think with the field goal unit issues, Michigan State's thinking seven points every time they're down on this part of the field. So third and two. You can still pick up the first down. And Indiana just losing a player coming off the field late. That's uh, 14, Andre Brown, one of the corners. And he's played very well today. Big, big bodies coming in for Michigan State. It looks like they're going to load it up for the run game. The problem is if you're Indiana with all these bodies, Connor Cook is as good as there is at pulling the ball out on the run action pass. Don't be surprised if this is a throw. Two tight ends and a fullback. They give it off for the first down, LJ Scott. It will be first and goal. And for the first time, or one of the few times at least, that offensive line able to create some space. And almost after every play, though, I'm watching an offensive lineman. This time it was Jack Conklin, number 74. He gets up, something's hurting. Not just everybody up there this part of the season is just gritting it out. The bye week next week can't come quickly enough. I don't think there's going to be a bunch of trick-or-treating on Saturday. I think no. it'll be rest time. Scott got a block. Turned the corner. Touchdown. There is a flag down. Holding offense, number 76, 10 yard penalty. Repeat first down. Donovan Clark, the fifth-year senior, and they've got a lot of those on this team. But he made a non-fifth-year senior mistake. Boy, this is a tough penalty. First and goal from the three. <laughs> That's not a hold. I mean, it didn't yeah, affect not the play a hold. at all. Well, and not only that, but he, he actually lets off his left arm as the guy's falling down. That's not a hold. I played that position for yes, you would five know. years in college and five years in the NFL. I know holding. That's not holding. <laughs> A big play nonetheless. As a matter of fact, it was a good play that you were beat to let the guy go so you wouldn't get the hold. First and goal from the 13. Blitz coming. Cook in trouble. Throws as he's being dragged down, and a great job by Cook to get rid of the ball and throw it away. And the, uh, the Indiana coaches want intentional grounding for Connor Cook. Now, the receiver on that side looked like he was going to go long, but there is nobody in the vicinity here. This would have been a huge penalty had they called it. I'm, I'm not saying it should have been called. It looked no. like a receiver could have gone there, but there was nobody within 10 yards of that ball when it landed. And he's landed. hit a cold streak right now, Ed. One out of the last eight passes. And it's hard when a white guy in white is all over your lower legs trying to throw it. They bring Scott back into the backfield. Tried the flanker screen, but that is defensed beautifully and knocked away by Nick Mangieri, who we've seen in the backfield a couple of times today. Well, this is the third time that we've seen Michigan State get deep into territory, uh, Indiana's territory, and then struggle. Wonderful job by Mangieri. That time, Donovan Clark, who has now moved out to the right tackle, not able to get his legs down. Red zone problems usually occur because you can't run the ball. Yep, exactly right. It's just not a part of what Michigan State has. Of course, they lost a great back in Jeremy Langford uh, off of last year's team, but uh, this front is struggling. Huge play here, third and goal. They may be forced to go for the field goal if they can't hit it here. To the end zone, touchdown! Tight end Josiah Price and a perfect strike by Cook. 
Didn't have a lot of room to get that no. through, but he drilled it. And he held it for half a second because Price was covered the first time he looked to him. He knew that the coverage would soften because of where Price was running by the second level of coverage. And Price, a guy who hadn't, we hadn't seen him much earlier in their game, had an ankle injury, but a really good threat in the pass game. It's a great way to break a dry spell, isn't it? That was a nice throw. And a good catch in traffic by a tight end. Geiger for the point after. Wow, they, they're having trouble. That was another almost drop snap by the holder. In just over a half, Connor Cook has thrown for 284 yards and three touchdowns for the Spartans. Want to go? Lucy, she knocked the ball <laughs> off, the, off the tee again. She's unstoppable. <laughs> you could only help to contain her. <laughs> Dunn and Graham are deep in what has been a seesaw battle of passing offenses. Graham will take a knee and they'll go from the 25. ABC Saturday Night Football presented by Walmart has Ezekiel Elliott, number one Ohio State in New Jersey, taking on Rutgers, 8 Eastern on ABC, as well as streaming live on Watch ESPN. And there is a marker down. That's unusual spot in the field for a ball that was touched back. Usually guys are kind of letting people run by. After the play was over, unsportsmanlike conduct, kicking team number nine. Also, unsportsmanlike conduct, receiving team number four. Those penalties offset. It's the first unsportsmanlike conduct penalty for each player. The old offsetting penalty. Yeah, that's uh, Again, Chris Covington. And Nicholson pushing on each other. Now they really couldn't tell who started it, and they, neither one would give up, so that's a good <laughs> call. Yeah. Yeah. Sudfeld leads the offense out. He's thrown for 197 yards in the first half. Howard is back out there, bad ankle and all. He's had a couple of pretty good runs in this ball game, and it's just determined to play. Sudfeld for Jones. A little hand fighting on the way down the sideline for Colhoun. Yeah, Colhoun was step for step on that time with Ricky Jones. You'd mentioned uh, earlier that Michigan State doesn't quite have the deep threat like they had last year with Keith Mumphrey. Indiana also struggling. If, if they could get one guy who could burn, Jones is probably their fastest. They could be even more dangerous than they are on offense, which is a mouthful. Certainly caught a lot of deep passes, averaging almost 20 yards a catch, and there's a good look at Howard. Kid just unwilling to give in to an injury. It looks like he's moving pretty well now. They go to Page underneath. Page across the 30 to the 31. That'll leave about third and four. The linebackers, Bulla and Harris, made the tackle. And all three of these starting linebackers are one, two, and three on the tackle charts for this ball club. Third down, Sudfeld underneath to Page. Page initially, it appeared to have enough yardage for the first down. And he looked like he was starting to come back. I'm not sure if he came back on his own or was driven back. Well, they marked it as if he was coming back by the defender. Page, a guy who looks like he has a nice feel in that slot. A lot of air on Page that time on a third and two in front of him. Blitz coming. Sudfeld hangs in the pocket and throws complete out to Simi Cobbs. Tell you what, you're not going to find better quarterback play than these two guys have shown today. Well, we, what will be interesting is you see both of these guys at 6'5", 6'6", and the way they throw it. When they go to work out and NFL teams see them, I think a lot of teams are going to like what they see. They're both smart. Cobbs again made the catch. He was stride for stride with Demetrius Cox. Cox never saw the ball. And Cobbs did. Cobbs did a nice job right here at the end. That left arm. Wow, one-handed catch. You give Cox credit, though. He's knocking at that arm, trying to get it down. And Cobbs catches it, brings it in. Excellent coverage. But, boy, Cobbs made an excellent play. Howard with a burst up the middle gets to the three. And how about the throw from Sudfeld? Oh, I mean, you couldn't put it on more money 
Both of these guys, Cook and Sudfeld, are putting on a – it's an academy today. When it looks like they worked on Howard's ankle at halftime because he looks good. And then they throw out in the flat and get the touchdown run. Reschke misses on the tackle, and Andre Booker works his way into the end zone. And now the question for Indiana. Remember, you had that uh, missed PAT earlier in the game, and so now you're down two. I think it's time to go for the two, don't you? No, I think you wait. I, I, I think if you go for it now, you force it. If you don't get it, uh, there's a missed tackle in open space there by Reschke. But if you miss the two-point conversion, then you have to go for it for the rest of the game. So I think in the third quarter, this is the right call. Well, you're the analyst. I'll go with you. <laughs> that looked like a high snap. Go for one, but you miss oh, it. Oh, boy. Yeah, you go for two there, Mike. That's exactly <laughs> what you do. Wow. What a kicking game. Hey, bad snaps and bad kicks really having an impact today. Indiana scores, but they're down by two. so banged up. Jack Conklin now icing his left hand. He's been doing that for a little bit. And then they were all looking for Donovan Clark in the offensive line huddle. Couldn't find him. Somebody looked down and said, oh, he's on the ground. He was on the ground cramping. I heard somebody say, what else can happen? This offensive line continues to have injury issues. You know, there's a question we should never ask. What else can happen? Because whatever you didn't think of is going to happen after that. Well, and you've got a new Left tackle as Cody Keeler has now moved over. Sometimes they flop the line, but they're just trying to get a combination to work. Out of the eye this time, and Connor Cook on a roll and in trouble. And coming up from his middle linebacker spot, T.J. Simmons. He saw that play in a hurry and just turned the Jets on. And the secondary, Simmons really showing the ability. We noticed that studying him earlier, just a really good once he sees it, he's very fast to the ball. But when Connor Cook came around on that on that boot, there was not one guy open. And this is a secondary for Indiana that's really struggled. Cook a little gimpy. We saw him uh, get hit in the ribs early and have to come out for a play. Simmons has some closing speed. He's got two sacks for that. Cook again back over the middle, this time intended for the tight end Price, and he missed him. Well, T.J. Simmons got away with a... Uh, I think maybe a defensive hold that time on, on uh, Price. Price made a nice move to the inside. Simmons right there got the hand yeah. on him. Not too bad, but uh, Simmons looking like he's a little gippy as he came off. We've heard a lot of cramping. We've, we saw some other people. We saw uh, middle linebacker Marcus Oliver getting his calves worked on at one point. So a lot of guys cramping. Third and long, Indiana has blitzed in this situation before. They come with only four this time. And Cook with plenty of time on a post incomplete. Ooh. And Kings wants a interference call, but he's not going to get it on that. Uh, again, outstanding secondary play by Indiana. Well, uh, very close, though. Tyler Green, he's a, another true freshman. First year freshman, and Cook is beside himself. Green had his hands all over Kings. I can't tell if Cook is upset at the route. Yeah, that's that. That's pass interference. Uh, you have to call it. Kings is going back, and the defensive back held his inside arm down. And, and as a young guy, Green's got to realize he doesn't have to do that with his hands. He was right on his hip in great position, but that looked all the world like a miss pass interference. Hartbarger, what a punt. And drives Mitchell Page all the way back to the 25-yard line. Flag is down as Page goes down at the 28-yard line. Terrific kick by Hartbarger. 56 yards and a lot of hang time. And this penalty is probably going to push them back. During the return, illegal block in the back. Receiving team, number 24. 10-yard penalty, first down. Ed, you mentioned at the beginning of the game, believe it or not, one of the strengths of Indiana is that offensive line. And playing against a ferocious defensive line, they've consistently given a nice pocket for Sudfeld 
to step into it. And then when needed, they've gotten some of their big guys down. This after that penalty gave Indiana a first down and then a walk-in for Ricky Jones on the wide receiver screen because the big guys got out front. Michigan State having their troubles up front. But for Indiana, a program you wouldn't expect it. Their strength is right here. Michigan State's defense didn't have a chance to rest very long. Howard trying to get to the outside makes the cut lowers the shoulder this guy is a beast I'm telling you when he gets when he gets a chance to go to the NFL somebody's camp he's gonna stick transferred from UAB when they let go of the uh, football program he was wanted by Notre Dame he knew Kevin Coleman was leaving here he liked the running back coach liked the culture they were building and a guy on a gimpy ankle looks pretty good second and short Tried to get it to him, and that's a tough catch for a running back to make as they let the lineman through and then tried to throw it by him. And Lawrence Thomas, number eight, was right in the quarterback's face. Yeah, I'm not sure Thomas maybe didn't get a little piece of this. But now you've got a third and short situation. Howard is in the backfield. He has been a little slow. His runs between the tackles have not been very promising. It's been off tackle that has worked. Michigan State crowd exhorting that defense to make a stand here. Fagan to Howard. Sudfeld under pressure and throws incomplete. Pressure changes everything. That was there. That play was they were going to have two guys open. And Shalit Calhoun, who's been very quiet today after a monster game against Michigan, does an excellent job. He beats the blocker to the inside, and Sudfeld has Cobbs open, working one-on-one -on -one against the safety in Miller and is not able to get it done. Good job by Calhoun on the inside move. Calhoun, the two-time Defensive Player of the Week in the Big Ten. McGarrett Kings is deep. Toth got a nice kick, gets the bounce. Beautiful roll for Indiana. All the way to the 11-yard line. We check in with Robert Flores. Robert. Yeah. yeah. That is the stunner. So was the 63-yard punt here, Robert. That pushes Michigan State all the way back to its own 11 yard line. They are up by two with 7.52 to go third quarter. Howard did shirt. He looked a little better coming back. You know, sprained ankle. You, uh, Kevin Wilson said to Laura earlier that they were told it couldn't get hurt, where sometimes it's a little better as you get some of that movement going, but also could have gotten a little medicine, a little pain medicine at halftime potentially. Give it to Williams, and Delton Williams stretches toward the sideline. He gets very, very little. T. Gray scales wouldn't let him get outside. And Indiana has acquitted itself against the run very, very well today. And the front seven for Indiana is very good. This is the thing that Kevin Wilson, when he got here, went hard to work on recruiting defensive linemen. They've started to move some people around right now. Robert McCray is in there at defensive tackle. He's a former outside linebacker, number 47. They've been getting a bunch of guys in, and they have gotten so much better at the line of scrimmage. The running backs have 18 carries, only 21 yards for Michigan State. Blitz coming. Cook unloads, and it's Price out to the 15-yard line, but that will leave them a third and six. Terrific read by Cook. He knew the blitz was coming. Pick up some positive yardage to get yourself to a third and medium instead of a third and long. This is where uh, Burbridge, number 16, always comes into play. The offensive staff, Dave Warner, said last week, they knew we were going to throw it to him when we needed to, and we just had to keep doing it. One-on-one, -on -one, it looks like, up top. They move Shelton to the top of the formation. Bullets coming again. And they got to Cook. That will force a three and out. Three sacks today, four sacks today for that Indiana defense. That gives them 21 for the year. They came in in the top fourth of the nation. And I've been talking about Darius Latham. I talked to him at the beginning of the game, but boy, Ralph.
Green has played just a monster game in the middle. I know he's not getting that sack, but believe me, he's the one who caused it. Yes. He blew up an offensive lineman and a running back, and Cook had nowhere to go. Line drive, very, very short kick taken by Page. He's down near the 40-yard line, only a 33-yard punt. It wasn't very high. The kicking game has had a tremendous impact on this ball game. Sudfeld will lead them out when we come back. This game, two missed point after. Indiana with great field position after the short punt. And they go on the ground to Majet on the first play, and Majet finds running room. Picks up nine, almost ten yards on first down. And wow, as Indiana's going fast, but that middle of that offensive line, that was four yards of push. Second and one, Majette will get the first down to the 30. Majette, a guy who true freshman came in, was playing some receiver or kicking, uh, kick return when Jordan Howard went down a few weeks ago. They said, let's give him some run last week against Rutgers, he just exploded. So they're getting him a little bit of run, a little more explosive at the running back than Howard, who goes for the power. Averaged over seven yards of carry last week. Sudfeld changing the play. First and, down from the 30. And good out of the backfield, too. Majette again. Cuts it back off tackle. Got everything out of that when he could. Picks up five and a half yards. Stopped by John Reschke. Michigan State's defensive line is being drive two and three yards on every running play now. I mean, they're just getting knocked off the ball. With that field position that they were given, Indiana is smelling some blood here. Indiana going at light speed, and that ball batted down at the line of scrimmage. Lawrence Thomas timed it beautifully. Can't get there. Keep your eyes on the quarterback and jump. Hit him right in the hands, didn't it? And that was wide open for the first down. Nice job. I'm not sure either coach wants to rely on a field goal kicker at this point or a snapper or a holder. Got one-on-one -on -one with Ricky Jones down at the bottom of the field. Blitz coming for Michigan State. They pick it up. Sudfeld throws underneath and it's knocked down incomplete. Great job by Reschke again, diving in front of the receiver and getting his hands on it. And as good as Griffin Oaks has been in field goals this year, you have to be awfully scared if you're an Indiana fan right now. As bad as the PATs have been, they've missed two, had some snap issues, and here comes Oaks, who was visibly upset. And uh, Kevin Wilson had to tell him to calm down a bit after that missed PAT. Let's see if he's lowered his blood pressure or not. He's only missed one field goal all year long. This will be from 42. Holy cow. Eric Toth, the punter slash holder, had a high snap that he had to get down. I'm not sure if it got down. And the nightmare day for Griffin Oaks. I mean, just the nightmare day. Toth does a good, yeah, not super high, but everything's being pushed to the right. That's that's exactly what he's done as the ball works back right to left like all, like a lot of right footed kickers do. But Oaks has been off, and Kevin Wilson continuing to talk to him, knowing he's going to need him at the end of the game. And you can see the frustration. They're both gesturing as why, I don't know why. Well, we might want to get it figured out if we're Indiana, because this game looks like it might come down to a field goal. Cook. Heck of a catch by Burbridge. Looked like it was behind him and dives back to make his sixth catch. Terrific blitz pickup by the running back. Number 24, Gerald Holmes, gets a cut block there on the end, opens up the throw window. And it, it is, uh, Michigan State looks like Texas Tech. They have no run game. Everyone's out of the backfield. They're in the shotgun. Connor Cook doing his best spread quarterback impersonation. They just, they, they're, they have to do what works, and this is what it is. And it's not like they haven't tried. And they will try again. Cook on the keeper. 
gets to the outside. He'll pick up seven. Laura Rutledge with more on the rut game. Laura. Just before this drive, Connor Cook on the Michigan State sideline was saying very loudly, are we done running the ball and can't we get someone to run the ball? He's feeling the rushing struggles as well. well he called his own number. <laughs> yeah, that's the way to do it. And of course, Madre London, who was the starting running back, injured, missed Michigan, now missing, missing uh, Indiana. But uh, a shuffling, injured offensive line has been the real problem for Michigan State. Use four different players at tailback. None have separated themselves from the field. This time running room for Holmes. Stop just shy, it appears, of the first down. With all the great running backs that they've had here at Michigan State, this is kind of what you expect at this point in the game. Excellent job by Holmes getting his hand down. What a play by Oliver to get in there yeah. and make the stop, though. He went right through the blocker. You know, if you're going to be in Connor Cook land the rest of the season, this is one of those down and distances where you could take a shot with a senior quarterback. You don't necessarily have to run it here. Heavy formation. Quarterback keeper, they will have the first down. This is a big deal for Michigan State's defensive line. They, the, the, the last drive, Michigan State's defensive line could not get off blocks at all. They were gassed. They were being pushed back. So Connor Cook and the offense coming out, getting a drive, allowing the defense to catch their breath a bit on the sideline is a big deal. Defense getting a breather right now. Terry in, takes the Wildcat snap, gets to the 50. Week seven, Monday night, a shootout in the desert. Joe Flacco and the Ravens against Carson Palmer and the Cardinals. Coverage starts with Monday night countdown at six on ESPN, as well as streaming live on Watch ESPN. Been a tough go for the Ravens, and it's not gonna get any easier in Phoenix. They didn't used to say that when I played for the Cardinals. No, they didn't. <laughs> no, they didn't. <laughs> A little different franchise now. Cook. All the way down to the 30-yard line. He is fun to watch throw the ball, isn't he? Yes, it uh, is. It just comes off easily. He's athletic enough to be out in space. He's got this lean he does right before the snap. I think he's trying to get the center's attention by leaning over that way. But this is just a bullet to Holmes. And they very seldom throw to the running backs. We asked Connor Cook about that the other day. He says he likes to throw it downfield, and that wasn't a swing. They sent Holmes out in the pattern. That's one of the reasons he had an opportunity. Stays in as the tailback. He'll get the carry. Holmes picks up about seven again. What a nice job. Dave Warner, the offensive coordinator, is calling a beautiful game. He really is. Given all the things that Michigan State has had to deal with, and now as Indiana starts to get a little tired on their side of the ball, there's Dave, Jim Bowman there to his right, longtime coach at Ohio State, the co-ops coordinator, but Dave Warner, who we met with, I think doing a great job. Just finding what's working, and now he's got a little bit of a run game going, so let's milk the clock and see if we can't get another one. Holmes again. He's got the first down inside the 20 before he's pushed back. Good hard run, and oh no, an offensive lineman looks like Brian Allen. They cannot no. afford this. Brian's brother, Jack, the normal center is already out with an ankle injury. Yeah, virtually everybody that's playing is banged yeah. up. There's Jack looking on. But this has been just a really tough run for Michigan State. Now coming in at left guard is uh, David Beadle, a guy who wasn't even on the two deep coming into today's game. Number 59, Beetle has to come in. The red shirt freshman. And that will be the end of the third quarter here in East Lansing. Both teams indicating that the fourth quarter is ours. We will see.
This presentation of college football will continue after this message and a word from our ABC stations. Cinnamon. In it. You know Cinnamon? Yeah, you go to Cincinnati, Highline Chili. Cinnamon. 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 I like it spicy. But uh, some people in this part of the country go with a sweeter cinnamon finish. Like cinnamon on cinnamon rolls. It's That's pretty good. It. It's just got a sweeter finish. Cook, pump fake. Intended for McGarrett Kings. Well covered. Safety came over at the end. Boy, they will throw that pump fake. They call five or six of those a game. Hit one last week to McGarrett Kings late against Michigan. Get them back in it. His 30 and 3 record is the best among active quarterbacks in all of FBS. And he is the winningest in school history. Get a Facing feeling, a second and 10. Get a feeling you may need seven here if you're Michigan State, though, the way Indiana looked on offense in the last drive. Blitz coming, throws underneath to Lyle. Jamal Lyles to the 10. Needed to reach the nine for a first down. Big third and one coming. Well, you've been getting a little run game going with Gerald Holmes. Uh, oh, Simmons is a guy you don't want to lose if you are Indiana. He's been playing great all day. Looks like he's favoring his left arm or shoulder. This uh, got a big fullback in there. 250-pound Trevin Pendleton. They'll go over the quarterback keeper again, which was successful last time. And it looks like it might have been successful this time. And it is. First and goal. Michigan State, they are up by two. Brian Allen, the injured left guard, still out. We understand it was a knee injury from Laura down on the field. His brother Jack not able to play today. Boy, could they use those guys now. This is this is where you were talking about, Mike, where you don't ha not having that real good power run yep. game can hurt you. Make the heavy side of the formation to the right. Two tight ends and a fullback. Holmes, nothing. Well, and unfortunately for Michigan State, you're calling a play where a redshirt freshman, David Beadle, who has not played much, has to pull. It just doesn't feel like he's into the flow of the game at all. The running back got right on his hip, and uh, Beadle looked like he was a little unsure of when he was supposed to cut up there. And a Darius Rayner was waiting for him. But I, I, you know, I don't know from this down a distance if I'm not just letting a fortune, future top 10 NFL pick in Connor Cook. I, I think he's that good of a quarterback. I think he's going to go that high. Now let him throw it here. Fakes to Holmes, wants to throw. Pressure in his face to the end zone. Incomplete. Two receivers, three defenders at the back of the end zone. That brings up third down. Right now, I don't think either coach wants to see a field goal kicker come on the field. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. Of course, if you're Michigan State, I don't, you know, unless you get down to like fourth in, in, in goal inside the two, I'm not sure you're going to go for it here. Oh, I think you'd still go for the field goal, but you're just not <laughs> yeah. going to be happy about it. No, but, but I, I still, you get down inside two on fourth down and goal, I think you may be going for it. Quick, quick throw to the outside. McGarrett Kings made the fake and then is dragged out of bounds at the three-yard line. What a now, tackle. this will be an interesting decision, and you're right. That was an incredible play by Chase Dutra. Dutra looked all to the world like he was about to get yes. beat for a touchdown, and he reaches out, gets over there just a little bit late. Kings makes a wonderful stop, but Dutra's left hand just gets a... A touch oh, of it. He got the face mask, too. Yeah, he got lucky there at the end of the play. Let's see. And this is not reviewable. No, it is not. Oh, is he lucky. Dutra very lucky that that was not seen at the end of the play because it would have been an automatic first down. And I am a little surprised to see the field goal unit on fourth and goal from the three come in. It's a chip shot, 21-yard field goal try. Good snap, good hold, and a good kick. So they finally execute one perfectly 
and Michigan State takes a five-point lead on Indiana. At the University of North Carolina spends a whole lot of time getting his big players ready to play and looking for a signature win. It would come because of the offensive line and some defensive pressure from the front that Indiana has been able to generate. And they'll start from the 25. Let's take a look at the bright side brought to you by CarMax. We wanted to send a shout out to our usual sideline reporter, Jerry Punch. The good doctor was a family man last night attending his son Logan's final high school football game. Logan, a center for Knoxville Catholic. The Fighting Irish down in Knoxville, Tennessee. Doc's daughter, Jesse, his wife, Joni, joined Logan in the celebration. Knoxville Catholic doubled up on Cloudland High School, 46-23. Way to go, Jerry. And way to go, all the punches. And Logan, I don't think his career is done. No. Terrific deep snapper. Deep snapper. It's right there in Knoxville. The volunteers have been talking to him a bit. His uh, career may go on. Sudfell. Wow, what a catch. Yes, it was. Jones went right down to his shoe top to take that one off the grass. And Indiana just is not flinching. Uh, you know, they're just going nowhere. Terrific catch. Good coverage there by Cox, but that was a uh, good throw, too. Go out in the flat to Page. Spun around. Was he down? Apparently not. Oh. Ball came out. Ooh. Fighting and for that extra Page yardage. Back. And Michigan State saying that it was a fumble. Page, who somehow was able to keep his uh, balance over there as Monte Nicholson spun him around. I don't think he was out of bounds. I don't either. Don't think he was down. Now, well, they're going to review this. Now, Michigan State, the question is who recovers it? Because Page, as Page goes down, it didn't look like he was out of bounds. But watch as the ball comes back. The question is, can you tell? It does look like Lawrence, Lawrence Thomas has it. The ruling on the previous play is that the runner's progress was stopped. The previous play is under further review. Now, well, progress is stopped. It's over, right? Well, what they're going to look for is to see if the ball came loose before his progress stopped is the only thing I can think because if they've ruled the progress is stopped, I'm not sure how you overturn this. I'm not either because if you say the progress was stopped, the play is over. I think what they're wondering is when that ball started coming loose. But you're right. If they're saying progress is stopped, the play is it's dead. Done. It's dead before the fumble. And to my knowledge, it's not reviewable if the progress is stopped. So either the official is wrong about what he announced. I'm wondering if what they're looking for is to see if Page the ball was loose before his progress stopped. Well, that's the only it thing I can think of. Well, no, if, if the ball is loose before progress stopped, then the ball is live, so it's no longer the ball. But what they're looking for is whether or not he stepped out of bounds. They are not. We are getting word from the review booth that they, they are not reviewing whether this was a turnover or not, just whether he stepped out of bounds. Now, it's hard to tell. His toes appear to be above the line. And his left heel will continue to drive out. That looks like he's in. Now, if it's one of two things. Either the referee announced the wrong thing. Well, they, they, well, we'll see what they're reviewing. We'll get a, a uh, we have communication down to our truck to the replay booth. We'll have to ask what exactly they were looking at because if the forward progress stopped, I'm with you. Play's over. But the only thing I can think is if the ball was loose before his forward progress, they ruled it, then it's a live ball. But. If you announce that forward progress was stopped, there's nothing else you can look at. Well, no, no, no. It's the same as if you say a guy was down and he wasn't down. If the ball was loose before his forward progress was stopped, then it would be a live ball. That's all. It, only if it came loose before he was stopped is, is what the only thing I think they could be looking but it, for. But th that is so hard to tell. Oh, no. To I, go back. No, I don't think the ball did come out. If they're saying progress stopped and... If they say that, that his forward progress stopped. Out 
And once again, though, even if they somehow say it was fumbled, I'm not sure they know who recovered it. After further review, the ruling on the field of progress stop stands as called. To me, Sorry. this is a mixing of terms. Well, and I'm looking at the reviewable plays, and what it says is you can review forward progress for possible first down or a touchdown. It doesn't say that you can check forward progress for a fumble. That well, was my point. Yeah, we're going to have to get this checked. And this crowd has been exercised all day long by calls from the officiating crew. Sudfeld back to throw. Jones makes the catch. Knocked out of bounds up at the 43. I'd like to find out if we could if the official's announcement of forward progress was the one that he wanted to make. It would appear that it was because he made the second announcement of forward progress. But then that means you shouldn't have been reviewing the play. Well, from what I'm reading from the reviewable plays list that we were given, forward progress for a possible first down or touchdown, which neither of those no, were. wasn't close. So I'm not quite sure how they reviewed it and said that his uh, forward progress was stopped negating the fumble. Well, it's an academic argument at this point because we have moved on. Ball start offense number 77. Five-yard penalty remains first down. It's a big right tackle, Demetri Camille. Mark D'Antonio's demeanor never seems to change, does it? It's yeah. just perfectly tempered. I think his players respond to that. First and 15, Sudfeld under pressure. Can't get away, taken down at the 30. Joel Heath got him and wouldn't let go. Well, there's that defensive line that got a little bit of rest with that last drive by Michigan State. We were talking about how tired they were on the last drive. They don't look tired here. They blew up that offensive line. Malik McDowell got great push, and he finished it off. Indiana has to be careful here. Very, very long distance, and Sudfeld comes out throwing. Tipped and incomplete. Simi Cobbs had a shot at it. Got his hands on it and lost it to Jermaine Edmondson, who wouldn't give up. This is the throw we've seen Connor Cook make a bunch of times. You throw it behind them, and you're right, Edmondson didn't give up. But that's a guy, 39, who practices against that a lot because Michigan State throws that ball a ton. So he's used to finishing him out. Edmondson used that technique of running his hand up between the receiver's hands inside his arms, and he knocked it away. Third and 23, you're not going to have time to sit in the pocket long enough for someone to come open 23 yards down the field. So you've got to get something with movement where a guy can keep running. And look one way, come back the other. Complete it to Graham. Get some of the yardage back, but they'll have to punt it away with under 10 minutes left. I like the call that time by Kevin Johns, and uh, Kevin Wilson also helps uh, call the plays for Indiana, you, you drop back to pass there. You may get sacked again. The exactly. field should be terrible. That time, almost pop it open with Damon Grant, a missed a miss tackle by uh, Bulla. And they almost uh, pick up a huge third down by a screen. Toth will kick to Kings. Low driving spiral. Kings back to the 12. Made a couple of guys miss, got down the sideline, hit out of bounds. Oh, that looked like a late hit. Sure did. Crowd yeah. wants a flag on that. And the coaches and players on the Michigan State sideline are going nuts again. Well, they may feel like they've gotten no breaks today if they're Michigan State. And that one, you got a call. Guys going out of bounds, diving at the leg. I think that should have been a call. Blue with the crowd thinking they were going to get the fumble the whole time. They weren't looking at the fumble. They were only looking whether he stepped out of bounds. Which would have been nice had they explained that. Well, there you go. They just did. Or I just did. Glad somebody just did. 
Connor Cook down the sidelines. Burbridge made the catch. What a throw. He beat Tyler Green, and Cook just dropped it in there. Good pocket that time for Connor Cook to stand tall. Coverage is there. You just can't throw it any better. You got a true freshman Green doing everything he can, grabbing at the arms of Burbridge. Touch pass or a missile, it makes no difference. Connor Cook has the entire repertoire. Indiana fans probably a little mad they didn't get Cook. His dad was a tight end for uh, Well, they the were Hoosiers. 0 11 when he was a senior, <laughs> so maybe that's the reason they didn't get him. Blitz coming. They pick it up. Great blocking. Cook on the post and just missed him. Check in with Robert Flores. Robert? Robert, thanks so much, and Tennessee has been bedeviled by Alabama. Of course, they're not alone either. Mm -mm. Cook, short set, throws the quick slant, and it's incomplete. Burbridge couldn't hang on. Pretty good coverage by Crawford. And this uh, secondary for Indiana, even though they have given up 31 points, it looks like they have played a heck of a game. Well, <laughs> they're playing against the guy who it feels like Connor Cook sometimes is driving to the receiver and handing him the ball. Yes. It's so accurate. But the coverage, I mean, last week Michigan defensively had great coverage, and this guy was just putting it behind defensive backs where they couldn't see it. He just really has a great feel despite not having a running game and despite having an offensive line that had its struggles. Trying to keep the drive alive here, third and ten. Here comes more pressure. Cook steps up and throws. Kings. McGarrett Kings to the 24. First down, Spartans. The 20th Michigan State pass has gone for 10 or more yards there. And Indiana trying to get – Indiana needs to get a timeout. Kevin Wilson is all the way out on the numbers to get a timeout, get the uh, uh, officials' attention. He's allowed to go out to call a timeout. I know the officials are going nuts. He's allowed to get their attention as the head coach to get a timeout, but – Indiana went to do it, it almost like a hockey line change, and Michigan State came out to go fast, and Wilson got a little nervous. Don't you think we need a better system than the head coach sprinting to midfield to call a timeout? It gives him control, though, doesn't it? Sit back and throws complete. Great job by Cook to maintain his poise, get the ball back, and find Burbridge. You know, we, when we were covering Florida State for a couple of years, Jameis Winston, uh, Jimbo Fisher talked about his hand talent, how good he was with his hands. That's pretty incredible hand talent to be able to snatch that ball and sling it over there on tight coverage. 16 versus 16 on that side again. But that's, uh, that's impressive athleticism. L.J. Scott to tailback, second and a yard at the 15. And Scott will get the call. First down to the 11. You know, with the numbers that Connor Cook has, and with, if you study the team and the things that they don't have, I, you've got to start thinking of Connor Cook in the conversation for the Heisman, I think. From what I've seen today, from what I've studied coming into this game, he's playing at, at, at as high a level as a quarterback as I've seen. That's Clyde Newton down, who had that hit earlier on Cook that knocked the wind out of him. but It's been the year of the running back, but you're right. Yeah. I mean, he is just, he's terrific. I mean, if Leonard Fournette ends up with 2,000, 2,100 yards, I think he probably walks away with it, but he's got a career high tonight, and he has just put the ball so, he's so accurate. He can, he can hum it, but a lot of times you see the ball come in nice and soft and easy, very catchable ball. He just doesn't miss. And when you put it on people's hands and you give them the ability to run, of course, that was a great tackle there by Dutra, but that's good yards after catch. It, it keeps people from being hit when they do catch the ball. 
And even though that uh, completion percentage is a little lower than you'd think, and you mentioned he doesn't check down to his no. knots much because he's so good at forcing it down the field. He's got all those freebies. He could be up over 65% easily. He's gone over 2,000 yards. And he just doesn't make the mistakes that cost his offense. I'm doing a great job here burning time off the clock as well. We've got four more downs to work on it and possibly add to their total. Field goal would put them up by eight. Inside the five for L.J. Scott. They can get a first down at the one. 233-pound true freshman with Madre London out. He started to get a lot more carries. Good job holding on to the ball there. Boy, he ran into his own guy. But uh, you have to feel awfully good if you're Michigan State up five. If, <laughs> if you're Mark D'Antonio, uh, there's just no way. Nice job working the clock here by Michigan State, melting it away. But there's, I just don't see him running out that field goal unit. I'm sure it's his second choice. Scott again, hit at the five and driven back. Well, now don't get too conservative here. Your strength has been Connor Cook, not the run game. A little surprised on second and two that you're running the ball but there. But the this run game moves the clock. It sure does. Now third and four. But eight is not, eight points is not, eight point leads not feeling very good. And that's Michael Geiger, who. Uh, he didn't get called for missing a field goal earlier. Didn't get that stat because he ever never actually got to try it on a high snap. Cook. Ball game's on the line here. Cook to the goal line. Touchdown. There is a flag down. Kevin Wilson was again trying to get a timeout right before the snap. Illegal formation, five men in the backfield oh, oh boy. on the offense. Five-yard penalty, repeat third down. They simplified this rule a few years ago. A legal formation is four guys in the backfield, not five. And because Scott is in the backfield, you have one, two, three, four receivers. Scott needs to be a true freshman walking away. He needs to be up on the line of scrimmage to cover up that left tackle, meaning that left tackle can't have somebody have a free, uh, uh, it has to have somebody outside of him on the line of scrimmage. So Indiana's still alive. It's third down again. This time, though, it's nine yards. Looks like they're only going to rush four. Now they come with a blitz. Cook hangs in, throws for the end zone. Touchdown! R.J. Shelton has been quiet in the second half. And it looks like he made a band gesture after the play. You just can't throw the ball better than Connor Cook. And you can't do that. Just unbelievable guys are still doing that move after every, you get flagged for it every single time. There has been so much made of it that you can't do it. The result of the play is a touchdown. After the play is over, unsportsmanlike conduct on the offense, number 12. That penalty will be enforced on the kickoff. Crowd doesn't Five like it, and Mark D'Antonio doesn't even know what he did yet. They'll see it on the film yeah. when they look at it. And what a, big, what a big extra point. We've had two extra, missed extra points from Indiana, and now up 11. If you kick this, you're up two touchdowns. If you miss it, you're up a touchdown, two-point conversion, and a field goal to tie you. So a big extra point here for Michigan State. Connor Cook has now thrown for 398 yards, four touchdowns, and has hit 30 out of 52. None prettier than that one. Hold yeah, on. I'm, I, I'm not sure the Heisman is for MVP, but it's hard to say that that guy doesn't deserve consideration for just that. Graham on the return. 
working his way for every yard he can get up near the 40. And now for Indiana, they have to go super, super fast. Down two touchdowns, 447 left. You cannot mess around. They're used, they're used to going very fast. And let's see how Michigan State on this in this last 447 tries to rotate some defensive players to keep them fresh. Let's go to the sideline, Laura Rutledge. Laura? Watch Indiana's communication on this drive. Quarterback Nate Sudfeld went over to the offensive line and said, guys, be aware. It's going to take a little longer to get the call when it's so loud. Be patient, and I'll try to be as loud as possible. Thanks, Laura. He's also got to be as quick as possible. Play fake there. Sudfeld trying to get rid of it, but he's down. Sacked back at the 32-yard line. And that was Calhoun with his sixth sack of the year. Well, even if he wasn't down, which he is, they may have gotten intentional grounding, which would have been the same as the sack. But Calhoun would rather have the sack stat than the penalty. Sudfeld Jones got his hands on it, couldn't hold it. Demetrius Cox was there, but that was a great throw by Sudfeld and a makeable catch by Cox. Have we seen either quarterback really miss many throws no, at all today? Great. And that was Cox uh, before that. He had did a really nice job on Jones being physical, and Jones couldn't quite get off. And this is a place where try to cut this in half because you're definitely going for it, I think, on fourth down if you're Indiana. Looked like he mistimed his jump. Pressure coming. Sudfeld hangs in the pocket and throws, and he's got the first down out to the 43-yard line. Westbrook, I'm sorry, it was after the sack. They need to get to the 49. But here you go. Feels like the ball game right here. This is Sudfeld again. Two receivers, and you've got press coverage at the bottom. Throws underneath, tipped it incomplete. Demetrius Cox was out there with perfect coverage and knocked it away. Well, we haven't seen much of 15 Westbrook, but he's the tall receiver. Indiana just doesn't have, other than Simi Cobb, which is a little surprising that Cobb wouldn't be the guy that you're looking to on that side, but Westbrook, a true freshman, not able to make the play. But give Cox credit. He was very physical earlier on Ricky Jones. It looked like Jones mistimed his jump. It was because Cox was being physical. That time, he's one-on-one, -on -one, twice in a row. One is a catch, the other one not. A huge turnover on downs. And now Indiana in a world of hurt, 3.52 to go in the ball game. They have two timeouts left. The only two they can stop it. Williams in the tailback, he'll get the carry. Williams hit in the backfield and taken down and Clyde Newton, who was shaken up earlier, got a free ride and buried the running back behind the line of scrimmage. And you know what? Connor Cook may not break the single game passing may record not. now. Indiana taking one of their timeouts, trying to save it. We're not sure why you'd take that on first down. With two, you'd want to take it after second because if Michigan State were to pick up a first down now, you've, you've wasted that one. Well, it's almost academic. You know, you, you, well, take, you take him when you can. Well, I would say it's academic except what happened in Michigan State versus Michigan last week. Right? I mean, at, at the end of that game, That's you think there's... an outlier. Well, but, but you've got to play for the outlier, right? You have to well, play true. for Good point. a potential bad snap, the punter dropping the ball. And if you don't have those 10 seconds... You know, if you go back, and we'll show you all the things that had to happen, but the defense had to get a stop. The defense had to get several stops to make this happen. First, you have to have a bad snap. Check. Michigan punter Blake O'Neill has to drop it. Check. The ball has to be batted up in the air somehow by him missing the kick. Has to be caught by a guy who's not surrounded by defenders. That's Jalen Watts Jackson. He takes it downfield, picks up good blocking. He couldn't be tackled, couldn't be forced out of bounds. All those things and more. I mean, the punter has got to pick it up yeah. after he snaps it instead well, of and, falling and it on it. Grayson Miller and Jermaine Edmondson. Edmondson threw that block, but it was Miller who made the ball pop up. But, you know, if you're Indiana, using that timeout at the wrong place or the right place, well, use it at a different place, not wrong, just making a different choice. But that, that could get down to where you don't have those 10 seconds at the end of the game to make the play. 
Scott breaks the tackle. L.J. Scott still on his feet down to the 26. That's a first down. Well, nice hard run by Scott. ESPN has a big doubleheader coming your way. Texas A&M and Oxford against Ole Miss. That's ready to kick off. Then the Pac-12 center stage, number 10. Stanford against Washington at 1030 Eastern. Now they have used the, they used the second timeout to stop it? No, nope, they're letting it run. And they're in a place where they're getting down to where uh, Michigan State's not going to have to run the ball. They're going to have to do offensive plays now. They can't take a knee to end it. Straight up the middle for about three for L.J. Scott. Now you take a look at Michigan State and Ohio State. This is what you're thinking of if you're a Michigan State or Ohio State fan. Is what key games do these two teams have left? For Michigan State at Nebraska on the 7th, Ohio State against Minnesota, who we're not sure who that team is yet. But then, of course, they meet on the 21st in Penn State, and then a really tough game for Ohio State at Michigan, of course, the Big Ten championship game. But uh, looks like Michigan State may get to that game undefeated. I, I have big concerns about their offensive line. Scott breaks a tackle. Scott, touchdown. Keep in mind that scenario, we just showed you that schedule. But if Michigan State, Ohio State, and Michigan all finish three and one, it's gonna be a white knuckle ride for everybody until the committee decides who's the top team. If there were a three-way tie where Michigan State beats Michigan and, and they all have one way and a three-way, oh, three the, the tiebreaker is the college football playoff committee's vote for the highest team, which won't come out until Tuesday before the championship game. We have asked the Big Ten for a comment, have not heard back on an email, but I have to assume that the Big Ten is looking at a way not to wait to have to have to wait till Tuesday for the team from the East to figure out who would get in. Because all the other tiebreakers would not matter. And Mark D'Antonio knows they have salted this one away. And knew, and, and D'Antonio knew coming in they had that huge emotional win against their in-state rival last week that exactly. ended late. They come home. They're playing an Indiana team that just gave it away against Rutgers. He was very worried about this being a trap game because they do have a week off, which they need desperately. They need to get Jack Allen healthy, offensive line. Brian Allen healthy in the offensive line. They're, they're likely to get a couple of defensive backs back after the bye week. So what a huge win and a brilliant performance by Connor Cook, and I still don't think he's going to break 400 yards and the single game record because they finally got a run game going. Hey, here's a stat I don't think people are aware of. Michigan State has won 21 of its last 22 games in the Big Ten. That's stunning. Two minutes, 17 seconds left. Too much time to make up a 45-26 deficit. Ball came loose. Let's see if they ruled him down. Michigan State saying they had it. Now we've got guys starting to push and shove each other a little bit. And Michigan State has the football. <laughs> Connor Cooks loves the special teams all of a sudden. Whoa, that was... Excellent work. Chris Fry recovered, took the ball away from the uh, return man. Well, he was sure in there fighting for it, wasn't he? And unfortunately now. Indiana is so close. They really are. I mean, just right on the edge of being a really good football team. And Michigan State has to run offensive plays here. They can't quite run out the clock. 
with Indiana having one timeout, and because the clock was not running when they got the ball back, they're not going to be able to quite run this out completely without a first down. But here's Indiana down the stretch. It has been a brutal run here. Ohio State, Michigan State, they, like Ohio State, now get a buy. And the question for Indiana is, can they get two wins down the stretch? I think they're better than Maryland. I think they're better than Purdue. If Kevin Wilson can get this team a little healthier during the bye week, get Howard more healthy at running back, I think if they can hold together, uh, I don't, I'm not saying they're out of both of those games before that, but I think they're better than both the teams at the end, and I think they will get to a bowl game. Another break the line of scrimmage. Holmes, touchdown, and Indiana is just worn out up front. Nice little confidence booster for the offensive line for Michigan State. This is a good way for to go into a bye week. You know you're going to take some time off, and for this offensive line, they've had two touchdown runs here to close it out. So a beleaguered group for Michigan State up front coming through in the end, and they'll go into a bye week, get healthy, and uh, try to get on a nice run here to finish it out. Well, the extra point would make it 52-26. to 26. This is hardly a 52-26 yeah. game. They're just happy to execute a couple of kicks. <laughs> yeah, the offensive line in the kicking game yes. needed some confidence. Happy groups. Yes. You see Geiger able to celebrate a little bit. You know, and you'll think of Michigan State, the other problem they've had is in their secondary. We showed that graphic earlier. Only two of the top eight defensive backs coming into the season remain on the remain active. And uh, yet they hold Indiana to 26 points. They only had the one real breakdown at He's always been gifted. He's always had a great arm. We saw him last year. He had little moments where he'd kind of not be accurate and not have a feel. I, I just been studying him so far this year and seeing him today. There's just not one throw that's off the mark. Not one. No. It's, it's really impressive. Oh, this boy. ball is loose. It's still loose. And it looks like Michigan State may have it at the two. Well, Michigan State's trying to make up for all their bad kick plays yeah. in the season in one quarter. Well, this must have been what it felt like on the Titanic. <laughs> Here, let me go. Let me go. Let me get one. Can I throw one, just one pass? Is that ball on the two-yard line? I only need two for the record. Well, uh, you have to feel bad right now for Indiana for everything that's just come apart here at the end after they played so well and so hard. And like yeah. Michigan State, they're going to get that bye week when they really need it to get Howard to 100% where he can just turn around and run for 150 the way he had been at the beginning of the season. Howard just got out of the end zone. It really is impressive what Mark D'Antonio has done here. And I know all the hype around Jim Harbaugh at Michigan. And I don't know that uh, going forward D'Antonio is going to win as much as he did and Michigan State's going to win as much as they did against Michigan with Harbaugh there. But it's not gonna, like it's going to go the other way. This place no, has become, won't. this place in this part of the country, especially for defensive players and now quarterbacks, it's becoming a destination stop. Howard. Powers his way up to about the four-yard line. They won't have to snap it again. And you hope for Kevin Wilson in Indiana, they're, they're going to have enough gas in the tank. Yeah. They get a bye week. Get some guys healthy. This is a good enough team to be in a bowl game. I know some Indiana fans get a little, a little grouchy, but this team is so much better than it's been in so Look long. Look at the progress this guy yeah. has made. Yeah. Michigan State with its 12th straight. Connor Cook with another brilliant performance, and they survived the celebration hangover which was worrying them all year long, or all week long, 
after the win over Michigan. Let's go to the field and Laura. Thanks. Coach, we know your offensive line is banged up, but Connor Cook continues to be so accurate despite the pressure he's dealing with. What do you make of his performance tonight? Well, gutsy performance. You know, I thought he got hit a number of times tonight. And, uh, clutch catches again by our guys and uh, made plays. The, the, the score is not indicative of how close the game was, obviously. But, uh, uh, hey, just keep playing. Keep playing. We're 8 no, we, we keep moving. Two rushing touchdowns to close this one out. How big was that for your offensive line to give them some confidence going in the bye week? Well, very big, just the fact that we could run it. You know, the running was sort of tough early on. But, uh, you know, credit Indiana. They're playing well and everything. So, uh, you know, we busted a couple open. This bye week comes at a pretty good time for you. What are the plans for the bye week to make sure everybody gets healthy? Well, we're not going to practice. We need to get our guys back healthy. So, But we're going to work our guys hard, and, uh, you know, we'll get back stronger and faster. And we'll be ready. Thanks, Coach. Thank you. Always a gentleman, an exceptional coach. And he has his ball club undefeated again. The final Michigan State 52, Indiana 26 for Ed Cunningham and Laura Rutledge. This is Mike Patrick. Thanks for watching. So long from East Lansing. Let's send you to John Saunders in the studio.